Do we want to watch this? Do we want to make this our, our, our thing? Xander Hall is Not Your Ally by um, Dr. Robotnik. I think that maybe we could watch this. It's by DJ Mule. If I can get it. Uh, let's 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 see how it is. Let's start it off. I don't really know Xander Hall very well. No, I know one thing about him. One time he told people if they like over donate to him and they want their money back, they could just let him know and he'll send it back to them. And then, which I I think the most reasonable assumption is like, oh yeah, like if you give me money right now, and then like on the next day you regret it, um, then you could just send it. I'll send it back, which makes sense. Instead, somebody was like, yeah, over like the past year, I've donated six hundred dollars to you. Send it back to me. It's like how the fuck, you know. Uh, you know, how are you going to like, that's unreasonable, but let's watch. Let's go into it. Let's go into it. Uh, well, internet looks like I'm back again oh. doing another one of these videos. I could be making content about how leftists can start organizing, or I could be doing more Debate stuff about unions up. or, you know, how to get involved with direct action. But I think that people should just stop making political content because it's, it's not really political content. It's like political, um, Political words. What word am I looking for? Drama. Got it. Which is what this video is. Of course, the algorithm doesn't like that stuff. It loves. It's not that the algorithm doesn't like it. It's that it's boring for a lot of people. I'm not trying to be an asshole. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just uh, saying it how it happens to uh, be. Okay. So. Stuff like this. Drama. Yeah. Nonsense. And it's all because of a group of guys that monopolize the online left-wing politics space are increasingly ineffectual, perpetuate harmful behavior. And they're all white guys. We really need less white guys on the internet. Am I right, Dr. Robotnik, white guy? Come on. True. <laughs> I'm just fucking around. <laughs> and haven't actually done that much to change that scene since oh. Gamergate. That's right, gang. Okay. We're doing another video about Debate Bros. This time, okay. we're talking about Xander Hall and how he is not your ally. He's not. I'm white. All right. I don't need no ally. Okay. I've got everything I want. <laughs> Content notes. Mentions of racism, transphobia, general bigotry, discussions of relationship abuse, homelessness, eviction, addiction, drug use, misogyny, fascism, san uh, sanism. I don't even know what that is. Ableism, biphobia based, uh, conversion therapy, uh, footage of vomiting, uh, needles. Oh. Needles. Who is Xander Hall? Most people know him as the cheeky young debate bro regular guy who likes to smonk. And yeah. going along sure. with what they're saying, yeah. but not actually. Or from his alt right okay. pipeline video where he. Was that the vomit warning that you really felt the need to give us? Congratulates okay. himself on not being a fascist anymore. How I fell down the alt right pipeline. You know, there is a lot of cringe videos like that. How I, like, you know, I think, um, what's the other guy? Hunter Avalon. I was going to say the guy with the nice guy with the glasses. He's like how I got it's it, these uh, these videos to me are a little cringe because it's it is they're just bizarre. It's like how how I <laughs> most of them ring to me how I'm no longer the worst person in the world. And I don't have to watch the videos, but like to me, I feel like there's a difference between being like an edgy kid versus like a fucking conservative. And they'll or not even a conservative, or like a far like far right wing like fucking neo Nazi conservative. There's a difference between that. And they're like, yeah, I used to think Ben Shapiro was kind of funny when I was 13. Thank God I escaped that pipeline. And it's like, okay, man, but it probably wasn't really that deep, was it? You know what I mean? <laughs> but I don't know. It's just funny to me. But what a cool and normal thing to be proud of. Well done for doing the bare minimum, bro. If okay. you're on the left that doesn't really follow the debate scene, you're probably wondering what all the fuss is about. But if you're into the debate scene, you'll probably know him as. If you're into the debate scene, you should probably get the fucking like mental health counselor because you clearly need some kind of fucking psychiatric, psychiatric medication. Wannabe Vosh, as this is what most debate fans have been calling him for the last few years. Pe everybody calls everybody wannabe Vosh. Oh, this guy's dying. Um, anytime they want to insult them or destiny, depending on how like progressive or you know conservative they are. People call him things like the Zuma version of Vosh, or that he's copying Vosh's style, which is hilarious, to be honest, because Vosh copied Destiny's style, and Destiny copied the modern debate format, and they copied the Greco-Roman debate format. I digress a little bit, but you see what I'm what? saying here. This is a bit of an obtuse thing to criticize him for. Sure. Sandoval is also seemingly surrounded by a bunch of controversial drama, but it's more often than not- Uh, okay. Do I have a sex cult? An abuse fence? <laughs> I'm sure that's not true. Not uh, true for every debate bro on the internet, is, and uh, a lot of it is concerning and makes you wonder at all why people think he's even a based dude. So with all that in mind, why do people actually like him? 
Now, I know some of you are not going to want to hear this, but we have to address the facts here. And that Maybe is that when is you white. scroll through Xander Hall's YouTube page, there's actually say. a lot of cool leftist stuff on there. See, so oh, he's making okay. videos here about how Trump is bad, he's sticking up for trans people a lot, Ooh, and that's all Trump bad, good. Trump baby. People around his age or even a bit older are probably going to see themselves in him a little bit and maybe even see him as a bit of a role model for getting into politics, yeah. especially if they're already kind of skewed to the left. He's got yeah. a good stream personality, yeah. he interacts yeah. with chat a lot, and he's yeah. generally entertaining in an above average way. He's gained a big right. following since making content like this, and yes, I know you are going to get more views and subscribers, based on bigger content creators that you associate with. Yeah, yeah. Destiny gave me some hostile but helpful advice. Whoa, what was the advice? Ah. I know that from my own experience. However, you can't deny that Xander Hall, well, he knows how to content create. He uh, is an influencer wow. who has a brand and whatnot. However, huh? you'd be right in thinking that amongst these thumbnails, something just doesn't feel quite right. The more and more you scroll, the more and more you start to see things like this. Uh yeah, too much VTuber bullshit. That's that's what it is, okay? All VTubers are... are potentially bad people let's be honest here you're doing vtube oh, cringe weirdo you see how many even in the last thumbnail he put himself as like a weird image instead of who he was crazy that's weird uh yeah like twitter discourse could be a bit myopic and wrong but why are you focusing on this okay that one's a little okay. bit extra i don't know what that's all about so he, because he's talking so this one was but why are you focusing on this oh so the um, is a femboy a slur that's one of the videos Xander Hall made and then the grooming allegations against the dream so a criticism is going to be that's not important enough. Um, who cares? Okay, that one's a little bit extra. I don't know what that's all about. Uh, oh. Bad Bunny is a toxic clout chaser. Okay. All right. It's I guess it's content. Okay, he's just made a video in bad faith about one of my friends. Oh. Well, there we go. Now we know why the video's made. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I don't know. If, uh, so far, the, the criticism is that it's just bullshit drama. Like, okay. That's like the 99. That's, that's this video, I want you to know, is also like bullshit drama. Uh, it just has like a sense of superiority. I just want you to know that. Like, it's not like a criticism. Like, just 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 own the fact that like you know your content. Most like you, most of us are not making the most like profound, fucking insightful, like amazing content. If this thing slaps me again, I swear to God, I'm gonna go and I'm gonna do this to my wife. All right, stop hitting me, dude. I'm getting really angry. Okay. Well, and there's another one. Okay, it's just like obsessed with drama and. Uh, okay. Okay. This is fucked up. What is this guy's purpose on this platform? Is he a leftist or? Is he just a leftist some of the time Debate and a piece of up. shit whenever it suits him? Xander Hall prides himself on debating people who disagree with him on anything in the marketplace of ideas. And he doesn't limit the people he platforms in order to protect his user base. Oh no, he loves debating fascists, especially about the human rights of the people that he claims to support. It's so weird because like um, this guy doesn't really have very much content. And obviously when you start making like daily video content, it gets difficult to like have a fresh idea. That's why you have like one, two, three, four, five, six, probably 12, 13, 14, 15 videos over three years. So like you get into a point where you're like, okay, people want to see my content. I'm going to talk about something. And then you get a little bit into the YouTube sphere. Like, oh, I'm going to talk about allegations about this. It doesn't mean you can't make it, well, what people would consider important content. But like if you think that he just doesn't make important content, like why watch, just not watch him? Um, That's it. So, yeah. I mean, these look a little clickbaity. What do we got here? Um, what does subscribe to PewDiePie mean? That's your first, <laughs> that's your first video. I'm just saying, if you're gonna leverage this, uh, this claim against him, uh, what are Nazbols? I feel like that's a very terminally online thing. A conversation with some uh, comrades, two of them, cool. Three conversations with, I guess, more left, like very far leftist. Vosh, then another same thing about Vosh, the same video, so more drama. Uh, pick me gay people. Maybe that would be considered important. Unions, that could be an important video, I guess, by your logic. Trans people need our help. That could be important. Doomerism, that seems like more bullshit. Why kink belongs to pride? It's probably more bullshit. Uh, there are white supremacists on your Twitter. But yeah, this is this seems kind of clickbaity, and it's the same thing you're criticizing, I feel like. Uh, but why? If he's a leftist, surely okay. he knows that platforming people with strict ideologies becomes more of a battle to convert the opposing person's audience, but actually you've achieved nothing because the supporters of your point of view stay the same and the supporters of your opponents stay the same. But the new guess. impressionable viewers that haven't been exposed to either ideology have now been exposed to a violent ideology that will influence them easier and easier. Oh, so like this is one of those arguments where you shouldn't uh, talk to people that don't align with your ideology. I mean, like, listen, dude, I just disagree. I think that, um, I think generally speaking, talking to somebody, if you're, if you're like, you know, good at the conversation, uh, about or talking to a person with like a different ideology than you could potentially de uh, radicalize that person or even the people that follow them. So I'm not against it. Yeah, it could uh, obviously has could have the negative impact of exposing other people, but I just don't think uh, I don't think it's like a fundamentally horrible thing to do. Still, so, um, just in general. It depends on their material conditions and prior exposure to fascist ideology in our culture and media. The 
Hey everyone, it's Mule here. What Mule yeah. has forgotten is that there are probably a lot of people watching this video who don't understand why the platforming of bad ideas is bad. Debate bros have been taking up space in the online left for some time now, and a lot of their content focuses on debating fascists or conservatives on whether trans people should exist or whether there is actually a white yeah. genocide happening. Their entire modus operandi seems yeah. to be that we need to convert people who think differently to us. They're obsessed yeah. with this idea, even though it was proven wrong a hundred years ago by Vladimir Ilyich Lenin, who said this. Why should we bother to reply to Kautsky? He would reply to us, and we would have to reply to his reply. There's no end to that. It will be quite enough for us to announce that Kautsky is a traitor to the working class and everyone will understand everything. And of course- How is that a proof that this idea doesn't work? That was it? Wait, this quote from somebody I like proves that you can't de-radicalize people through conversation? Okay, well, this is- <laughs> Oh, well, okay, that's just now we're- Wow, that's crazy. That's an incredible- Okay, uh- <laughs> What, that's it? How is that proof, motherfucker? What the fuck? That's come on, dude. I personally couldn't so confidently like state to somebody that that's like uh, that's proof. That's not proof, dude. That's your opinion, and that's perfectly fine. You can have that opinion, but I disagree. Uh, and that's not proof. If, I, I thought he was gonna bring up like a study. I was like, okay, this guy's gonna have a study as to why uh, you shouldn't exchange ideas. I guess I was like, all right, I'm open to watching that. And then he's like, oh, this quote from a, from some kind of a Marxist. I was like, oh, okay, well that's. Uh of okay. course, multiple real instances of people that these nerds have debated who have remained steadfast in their fascist opinions. Right, but it's not just about de-radicalizing them. It's about like uh, the people that might follow them. So it's not just about them, um, or potentially you know removing them from the radicalization in the first place. You know, I think your best argument is if they do it in an irresponsible way, like if they just suck at the conversation. You know. Um, so there you have it. Now you're briefed on the debate person, the type of leftist yeah. who simply thrives on drama and doesn't give one iota of shits as to whether people are actually doing on the ground organizing, activism, or doing anything progressive at all. They love leftism as an aesthetic, as it were. Anyway, Maybe. back to Mule. Thanks, Mule. I don't think that it's like, uh, well, first of all, I don't know if these guys are actually leftists or if they're just like progressive, right? Leftists are fucking psychotics. Like, you know, they're insane. But, um,. I mean, I don't know if it's like that they just like it as a, what did he say, as like a fucking whatever, as an aesthetic. I mean, maybe, but I feel like that's a little bit of a reach. I mean, I feel like once you assume everybody's so bad faith, then you're probably never going to be able to have a, con like, that's the problem. Is like, in order to do effective, uh, effective content, like, like to de-radicalizing somebody, for instance, you have to not instantly assume everybody is uh operating in like the most like bad bad faith capacity most people are trying to do the thing that they feel is right they just maybe are very misguided on some of it and i know hit this guy so the question remains okay. does zanderhol know that platforming fascists goes against everything that leftists stand for how many fascists has he de-radicalized is zanderhol like a far left like whatever. something that's important to point out is that the de-radicalization of fascists is a very real discussion that leftists are going to have to have at some point as nazi oh, views and ideology oh. have the possibility to outlast the potential revolution or global shift towards more radically left-wing politics. Wait, aren't you debunking your own perspective here? How would you counter them other than to engage with them intelligently and like try to de-radicalize people? That's a little confusing, okay. What I do know of this kind of action that exists so far is that it's undertaken mainly by charities like Hope Not Hate, who tend to infiltrate telegram groups of fascists like the BMP or the EDL in the UK, who create disorder and sow dissent amongst the rank and file fashion, the movements who are losing faith in them due to the fact that they're not really addressing their material conditions and seem to be focused on something that is more of a losing battle. What is certainly not effective is nerds on the internet debating them, especially right. when those nerds, every now and then, let their mask slip a little bit and repeat the same fascist talking points they've been arguing against. Okay, well, what's... No, as you can see here, the debate Lord Zanderhal tends to actually just focus on drama, which is annoying because you can see from some of... So then he wouldn't be like a leftist, right? He would just be a drama con. Like, I do, like, I, food, I do a lot of drama. Hey, baby, you know, I'm here for the drama. You know, sometimes it's just... I like to think it's more important than just drama. But, like, you know, it's whatever, man. Sometimes it's just interesting to talk about. You don't always want to have, like, such a loaded conversation. Oh, I'm supposed to kill these. Of his other videos, he's right about some stuff, which is good. But then, okay. why does he focus on myopic things, like people on Twitter not agreeing with him? Why does he oh, use okay. words like woke scold and cry bully? What do those words even mean? Another yeah. thing to be aware of when looking at... What is a cry bully? I've heard that word before. I'm not 100% sure what that means. I mean, let me look it up. I can't trust what this guy has to say about it, so I have to look it up. Um, He thought a quote was proof, so... Definition cry bully. 
A person who self-righteously harasses or intimidates others while playing the victim, especially of a perceived social injustice. Oh, okay. The debate, bros, right, okay. is their takes. Sometimes their takes are so bizarre that they make no sense whatsoever. Uh, For example, this video where Xanderhal clickbaits you into all hell with the title, My Controversial Take on Platforming Joe Rogan. His okay. hot take is that Joe Rogan is an irresponsible platformer, but shouldn't lose his platform because he's a good interviewer. Now... Well, it's... Well, yeah, I mean, like, first of all, I don't think he's that irresponsible. Sometimes, he get, you know, everybody gets it wrong. Um, but like, what's the, when that would be controversial to you, I mean, the way that you even said it was like, but he should still be platform. Like, what the fuck? You know what I mean? Like, okay. Uh, I guess to his like, uh, audience of lefties, like as you say that he has, maybe that would be a controversial opinion. And so I guess controversialness is relative. Well, for a start, Joe Rogan is not a good interviewer. He's a stoner that sits there and goes, Hey, you ever seen a chimp pilot a jet on DMT? And if he's irresponsible at platforming people, why then should he keep his platform? I think one of the funniest and most telling things about this video and why would why should he lose his platform? <laughs> like this this is the thing. Like I listen, I don't I don't really watch Joe Rogan, but he's not that bad. Like, yeah, he's fucked up on some shit. Right? Absolutely. Who doesn't, right? That's what the whole thing. But like what makes him so like horrible? I'm so confused. Like what makes him such a bad plot? Like, just because he doesn't make content that you prefer? Like I don't understand. Like how far do we go? If we let the dominating narrative control who does not doesn't get to speak, what happens when like conservatives are the dominating narrative? Now all of a sudden they have an argument to say, well, you're irresponsible. I think that this is irresponsible. You know, irresponsibility is very opinion based and you have to change people's minds on that in a lot of instances. So, you know, like what the fuck? particular is that Xander Hall is sat there in a Shadow the Hedgehog onesie. You know, Shadow the Hedgehog, the ambivalent, Hedgehog. cool, and edgy character from the Sonic the Hedgehog series that doesn't really care about good or evil. He's too cool for that shit. Whilst okay. Xander Hall is sat there being ambivalent and edgy and not really caring okay. about good or evil. Why don't you just not watch the guy? Why don't you just do that? Because he's too cool for that shit. So anyway, why has he said this? What's the point? How often does he wear that, that onesie where like you... Isn't that weird? Like, imagine, like, somebody just could possibly be sitting on this stream right now, like, listening to what I'm saying, and then, like, waiting, waiting for content. Like, that seems really weird and, like, obsessive and kind of pathetic if, you, if you're someone who does that. Joe Rogan had this, like, one, like, actual, like, scientist or, like, an actual physicist or something on his show. Like, this is a smart guy that's being interviewed here that I wish I could talk to because okay. I have a million questions I would ask this guy if I could just talk to him directly. Okay. But Joe Rogan literally asked every question I would have asked. And by the end of that episode of his podcast, I don't think there was there would be any questions I'd have left to ask that guy. Bro, you're a 23 year old edge lord that got famous too quick. You're not a good interviewer either. He goes on to say that Rogan's interview with Daryl A. Davis, the Black Blues and R&B musician, who converted KKK members and de-radicalized them, was really good, and he was immersed in listening to the story. Oh, it was really good. I watched that too. That was a great. That was a great episode. Yeah. What's wrong with that? But that's nothing to do with Joe Rogan. You can go and listen to Daryl A. Davis's story from multiple other sources. We don't need a brain force chugging steroid smacking moron to show us this. You know. It just seems like you're obsessively, like you're kind of obsessed with Joe Rogan in like a weird way. I mean, like the, I, I feel like we we lost the idea. That, like, you don't have to watch things that you don't like. <laughs> like, you could just be like, yeah, this isn't for me and I don't like it. But why does he have to be deplatformed? <laughs> Do you know how much damage would be done if Joe Rogan ever got to be platformed? Because a lot of people look at Joe Rogan as, and I, I tend to as well, as, like, just, like, a normal fucking guy who, like, is famous and he's, like, very, like, you know, re generally representative of, like, a lot of people. And, uh, you know, him getting banned would feel like a like a silencing of free speech to a lot of people. And that would be like a literal fucking judgment day for a lot of people. In all honesty, it would not be a positive thing. I really don't think so. It would end up like having a negative impact. Um, it would just cause like a fucking right you, you just martyr Joe Rogan. Honestly. No. Also, I am an ex-fan of the Joe Rogan experience, and okay. in all the episodes that I watched, and I did watch a lot of Joe Rogan, most of the time, Joe just kind of sits there and goes, huh, wow, huh, yeah, whoa. What's an interviewer supposed to do? Like, pause the video every two seconds and apply his criticism? Uh, what I don't understand. I, you know, being a good interview might come down to just being somebody who doesn't talk too much. You know, <laughs> like, maybe you just need to, like, chill out, you know? And that can make you a very good interviewer. Oh, if Joe Rogan's a good interviewer, I'm literally the most best video essayist of all time on the internet. Okay. And I know I'm not. So Xander Hall, after blathering on for two minutes, okay. not really saying anything of value, decides that if the left banned Joe Rogan from Spotify, that that would be political suicide. Now, what does he mean by that? Well, I, I I'll tell you what absolutely he would be, These debate yeah. nerds are always talking about optics. They're always saying that lefty... Like, yeah, that would be. Do you know how many people, like, love Joe Rogan? He's got, like, the most successful podcast in the entire world. I, I, if that's not true, then it's up there as one of them.
Yeah, that would be suicide. That would like turn a lot of people and they'd make them very frustrated and be like, see, the conspiracies are true. That would 100% happen of like censorship. So yeah. These are too much for the average voter. And that's why they focus on myopic issues that like maybe five people have spoken about on twitter.com. You know, after they've had baby's first political take and they aren't actually big talking points in the broader left. What? You see, what they're trying to do is shame lefties into being more palatable to the center left powers in electoral politics. Not mm -hmm. once have these nerds considered that most lefties have abandoned electoral politics in favor of direct action and organizing. Because you know, okay. we're smart. But it always comes back to this optics shit. Like, we should care about what conservatives and fascists think about us. It more, more than just conservatives and fascists, like Joe. This is a very, this is a very terminally online take. I just want you to know this. A lot of people enjoy Joe Rogan, and people, even those who don't, they don't, they, they don't want him to be banned because they think he, he's just a dude. I know that you guys like to like, I, I like this is the problem is people like to really like oh, morally load like I, I'm right, and what I think is really good. That's the exact same thing that like bad people think, right? Like that's what Hitler thought. I'm right. And I know it's controversial. Like, I'm not saying you're like Hitler. I'm just saying that, like, you know, where, where like, your your entire thing is is founded on you being correct and thinking everybody else is dumb and knows what they're talking about. But like, if you actually step into the real world, there'd be plenty of people who like Joe Rogan, and like, getting rid of him would would cause like a fucking. I would I guarantee you would cause a fucking riot. If it's the left's fault that Joe Rogan gets taken off Spotify and Nazis are frothing at the mouth, why should I care? I would simply have Nazis. a celebratory wank. But no, the reason That's that they weird. talk about optics all the time is because they think that you can win fascists over to our side with good optics. You starting to see how this is all a circle gang? Did well, yeah, I think that you can, I guess. I don't know if I'd use the word optics, but like good rhetoric or, you know, uh, yeah. You'd be surprised how much like, a conversation could do for people into like changing their perspective. But okay. Debate Nazis, have good optics, destroy all the lefties who have bad optics. So let's get into that last part. Cool. Or woke scolds. I guess we gotta look at what a woke scold is now. I'm learning all these new fucking debates. Woke scolds. Definition. Uh, aggressively chastise or berate somebody for holding insufficient left liberal politics or, oh, yeah, sounds like a fucking, a moron, annoying person. In this video, Xander Hall talks about his editor, Cherry Bread TV, who did a tweet about a bunch of online slang used by queer people, specifically trans people. Right. He then goes on to say that the cancellation that they received for this was outrageous and people lost their minds over it, which he then uses to catapult himself into a rant about how all LGBTQIA plus people online, specifically those that criticize Vosh and other debate bros, are mentally ill and abuse victims and for some reason need online internet points to feel good about themselves. Okay. It's extremely fucked up and just more evidence that whenever him and any of his debate bro friends use the term woke scold, what they actually mean is person that is holding me. Can you show me a clip so I know what you're talking about? Because I've seen people like Destiny and Vosh complain that like the online trans community is annoying or something. And like, I don't know if I agree with that. I don't really know too much about them. Um, but like, I, I, what's the argument here? Is it that like he's transphobic for not liking them? Or is the argument that he parrots him too much. What did he even say? I need to know what he said. This is what did he say? Need to account. Guess this is my uh, big woke school yeah, moment. Eh? Show me the clip. Sally boy. So huge thing to point out here, claiming that all LGBTQIA plus people are victims of abuse is a huge right wing conservative talking that? point. And it's actually the basis for conversion therapy. Can you show me where he said that though? Conversion therapists tend to point out people's abuse as a reason for them being queer. Not enough attention from daddy? Well, you became gay to get attention from other men. Not enough attention from mum? Well, you became gay to fill the feminine shaped hole in your life. Not all queer people are victims of abuse, and not okay. all victims of abuse are queer. It's a huge false cause fallacy. So I think somebody showed me a statistic that there might be a, uh, an argument to be made that, like, uh, gay people, for instance, are uh, like there's there's a higher level of abuse associated with being gay, and the argument is is that like being abused would turn you gay. I think we talked about this when Whoa Vicky was talking about it, but the reality is is that it's it's also possible that people who are seen as like um, LGBTQ in some capacity that are identified as young are like perceived as weak um, by maybe they're ostracized in some capacity, which is a very common left leaning talking point, and that they're easier because they're already isolated to abuse them. There's a lot here to talk about, but like also, can you show me Xander Hall saying that so we could actually talk about it? You know, like. You know, oh, correlation okay. is not causation. There's a lot more extremely telling points in this video, so I'm just going to list all yeah, of them off show real me, quick. Show me the video. <clears throat> Xanahal says at the start of this video that his editor is a quote-unquote bit of a memer, and then immediately talks memer. about how the meme they posted is how, quote, the trans community online is toxic and gatekeepy. Oh, is that the meme they posted? Okay. Which is all in all true for most communities online. It's just interesting how painting this as exclusively a trans problem is his main aim here. It's transphobic. If you're wondering okay. what the problem with that is, it's that it's transphobic. His editor said to him, apparently, I might get cancelled for this. And his response is basically, who cares, Lamau? In their post regarding their apparent cancellation, his editor references Vosh's post that he used as an explanation. 
Uh, okay. Uh, in this suite, I drop a FB bomb. I don't know what that means. Uh, Bing one, hard Y. I do this to show the interaction. Intentions in their language doesn't impress me. Their slurs don't frighten me. Or just okay, I have no idea what the fuck's going on. Of using the tactical N word. And for those of you who are blessed enough to oh. not know what this is, this is a situation where Vosh, in a debate with a fascist, just said the N word with the hard <laughs> yeah, R, I heard about literally that. just as a tactic to get shock and loads of views and controversy. Yep. And this it's is something that Zandahol classifies as a good meme. He also references Vosh's rant about queer people online, which was extremely queerphobic, again, because of what I mentioned previously about attaching toxic online behaviors to one marginalized demographic. It's super annoying because, yes, some okay. people are toxic online, but just log off. You don't have to see those people. Uh, I would say the same thing about this video. You don't have to You don't have to watch it. But this isn't a huge thing to worry about. Making this video, you don't have to watch Xander Hall. You don't have to hate watch him. I know that there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of views to be had about making videos about how like such and stuff le leftists are actually bad and a lot of lefties will eat it up and ironically the people who probably eat this up the most are probably um, conservatives are like see I knew that this person was bad so isn't that fun about for most people but you see the people that Xander Hall's actually talking about here are just people that disagree with him and he can't have that oh no god forbid he starts to say that the way to solve this problem is to make sure that there are less transphobic and queerphobic parents out there kind of trying to reinforce the fact that his de-radicalization is the solution to a lot of problems not that you know he should reflect on some of the more problematic aspects of his behavior that these so-called woke scolds point out now I'd be lying if I said that people didn't go too far online. Absolutely they do. I've seen hundreds and thousands. Thanks for being reasonable, brother. Of baby's first political opinion and people who really go ham and puritanical on issues that aren't really that much of an issue once you put them under a close analysis. But yeah, like this video. If I thought that people doing that was a problem, I'd be Separate. doing a video about them and not debate bros. It's good that people are exploring the boundaries of our language and how the roots of certain words can be harming people and how certain attitudes and behaviors need to be changed. It shows that our culture is evolving into one that's based on love and compassion rather than hateful exclusion. And it can also show that we have a long way to go when it comes to people resorting to puritanical, protestant, Wait, colonialist something. rhetoric when trying to change people's minds about things. Okay. But what? that's all by the by. There's one thing that's extra telling in this video. He says that woke scolds need to be de-radicalized in the same way that Nazis do. True, yeah. Obviously, Nazis are worse. Like, radical leftists are are not as bad as radical light ringers, uh, but they're still both annoying and need to be de-radicalized, honestly. Yeah, that, I agree with that. What's wrong with what he's saying there? Oh, this is this is cool. So what does that tell us about Zanderhal? So if you're a Zan fan and you've made it this far in the video, I gotta say kudos because most debate bro fans don't really watch the video and simply react to things out of context and then claim that I'm doing the same thing despite the hours and hours and hours of content that I've Well, you did just reference a video about and then not show the video, so... Watched from uh, your special boy. And some of you are sat there saying, well, no, Zanderhal is not a lib, he's not a centrist. What do you mean? He's progressive, he's a leftist. All right, all right, all right, all right, calm down. We're gonna get into it. Just grab a nice drink, some snackies, maybe play your favorite Vibby game while you're watching this video, and we're gonna get into it. Yeah. Scrolling through Xander Hall's YouTube page, you'll notice that there isn't a lot about his actual views when it comes to material conditions or class consciousness. A lot of his left-wing content is based on civil and human rights, which he kind of shits all over when he does his woke school content. So let's go right back to his first video that got a ton of views, How I Almost Became Alt-Right. He starts off by saying he never really went into politics and had a fairly progressive more. I once saw a Ben Shapiro meme. That video's probably cringe as fuck. Sorry, Xander Hall, but that video's probably the cringiest fucking thing in the entire world, so... Who taught him why it's wrong to be racist, misogynist, and bigoted in general, what? and that he was wrong? super disappointed in the USA and Americans in general when Trump got elected because even he could see that Trump was a bad guy. He then talks oh, about his radicalization face. through YouTube. And Trump got elected because um, I think it was very job oriented, and he was like, I can bring jobs back, and Clinton was like, we really can't do that the right way. Uh, and pretty much it. People were feeling underrepresented uh, when it came to their jobs. It's a big problem of technology displacing jobs and driving down wages, so that's pretty much why. I'm sure some people responded to some of the, uh, you know, the, some of the, 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 a little bit of racisms, um, a little ignorance. What the fuck what am I supposed to do? YouTube content. It's so weird listening to this because it's almost like he's talking about himself when he talks about Chris Reagan, who he describes introduced him to alt-right content. He says that Chris described himself as center-left and did a lot huh? of content about how feminism was obsolete in the USA in 2016. Obviously, Xanderhal doesn't huh? do content like that, but he does do content that attacks people that are too left-wing for him or annoy him personally. A lot okay. of similarities, you know? I the guess. video is just very short, so I'd encourage you to watch it yourself, but the long and short of it is that he went further down the pipeline and saw Charlottesville and the murder of Heather Heyer, and then he saw that that shit was actually really bad and wrong, so he started to lose faith in it. He then talks about how Destiny pulled him out of the alt-right pipeline. For those of you that are somehow blissfully unaware of Density, here is a quick recap. Density. Yeah, I mean, Destiny is like more of a center leftist. Probably more leftist than people want to say. 
And that's all his whole thing is trying to de-radicalize people. Yeah, you don't have to like him, but that's like his whole brand. Uh, he started making content on Twitch when it was still Justin.tv. He did like StarCraft 2 matches and he started doing debate yeah. content around 2016. Destiny apparently referred to himself as a libertarian nice before this, but then called himself a liberal when he heard another streamer call another streamer the F word. Anyway, in Destiny's debate- What is that? The F slur? Or like, fuck. I called him a fuck. A content, he did a lot of arguing against white supremacists and alt-right figureheads. All but right. now, here's the key thing about this, he yeah. kind of always did this from the center ground. Destiny has also admitted okay. to using slurs in private and has defended this in- Hey, listen, sometimes, hey, some people, you, know, you shouldn't be using them, but it, you know, my thing is, is like, as long as, I mean, it's just, the, the, the best way to start is to get people from using them, um, in public first, you know what I mean? That's like my big, uh, conversation when I talk to people about not using the R slur. It's like, you know, start with not saying it publicly, you know. But obviously you shouldn't say them at all, but okay. Facts in multiple debates. He's never been a communist or a socialist or an okay. anarchist. What's and has in fact argued against those ideologies from a capitalist viewpoint for a long, long time. Okay, in fact, so. Destiny is quoted as saying this about the George Floyd uprisings. The rioting needs to fucking stop. And if that means like white redneck fucking militia dudes out there mowing down dipshit protesters that think that they can torch buildings at 10 p.m., then at this point they have my fucking blessing. Because holy shit, this fucking shit needs to stop. It needs needed to stop a long time ago a little too based uh yeah that's why i think he got banned on twitch the first time so i could see that a little too much uh, i think that ultimately it's just about how like you know the rioting is not necessarily a good thing well the protests are good but the rioting has gone way too far and they're like destroying their own the communities and whatnot so, so yeah this is the guy that saved xander hall neoliberal okay that sounds like you're just using destiny as a curse word um you know if you have an extensive online history, you're going to have some bad shit that you've done. I don't know what to tell you. You know, you don't have to like everything that the person's done. So Politics are inherently like this. They say, yes, you can have your rights as long as you shut the fuck up about your queerness. Shut the fuck up uh, about your blackness. Okay. And do your job until you die in poverty like the wage slave that you are. I'm sure queer black people are really like, they probably think you're a hero. So it's good. Do not question the machine. You are part of the machine. What's hilarious about this, and the reason that I'm bringing this up, is because this is exactly where Xander Hall sits nowadays. Albeit slightly to the left of Destiny, he does argue in support of trans rights and Black Lives Matter. In a follow-up to this video, and the much longer how I fell down the alt-right pipeline and escaped, he immediately starts by saying, I also wasn't even a leftist when I made those videos. I was still identifying as what I now know to be a neoliberal. And then claims to have become more progressive, but only really says that he's a leftist and doesn't really go on much from there. He does say that apparently he was planning to read The Conquest of Bread live on stream, but I can't find that on his channel anywhere. So it's likely that he read a Sounds kind of grim. Bit of it. Thought it was going to be too boring and sack the idea off. Probably. Or maybe, like, are you even allowed to do that? Or is that like, is that like a DMCA? Um, who the fuck's going to sit there and watch him read a book for like fucking however long it takes to read books? I don't read books. So I don't know. Which is actually fair enough because I think that reading theory on a live stream is extremely boring content and I definitely would not be down for that. But it does kind of show yeah. that he's not really interested in that stuff and the vast majority of you just said that you could understand. Okay, whatever. There's all the content clearly shows a lack of understanding about how the working class struggle intersects with the civil rights that he supports. What's also interesting what? to point out is that while Xanderhal says that Destiny saved him from the alt-right pipeline, Xanderhal doesn't appear to have actually ever been debated on his alt-right views. He simply saw an example of right-wing views being torn to shreds in the form of Destiny debating a white supremacist. Yeah, that makes sense. The major difference between this and other forms of de-radicalization is that it simply made him not a Nazi. Did I don't understand the criticism. That's that's exactly how it works. Like you see your favorite content creator debate somebody else, and all of a sudden, wait, I really liked this Nazi guy, but then I saw Destiny talk to them, and then you know what? Now I realize it's that Nazi bad. That's pretty much how it works, brother. I don't know what the expectation is. Make him is. a communist, an anarchist, or even a socialist. The more and more that Xander Hall gushes okay. about Destiny, it becomes clearer and clearer that he has a deep love for the guy. Yeah, he's probably he's probably bisexual, dude. All these bisexual guys are just fucking you know they're weird. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I'm doing the fucking bisexual memes lately. It's funny to me, but it's a little too much. <laughs> Man. Okay. He wants to emulate him in every way. He says Maybe. that the edginess of Destiny made him oh think he was cool. He made a lot of friends in Destiny's Sorry. Discord server. Okay. Now, the next part is extremely interesting. Destiny Groom Xander Hall? What? Is that, is that the title of this video when I post it? What? The dog looks cool. Interesting. He talks about our schoolboy Sean's video, The Fate of the Frogmen. A video in which Sean talks about the online alt-right and their slow sad march into irrelevance. And Zan the Man says that this was the moment that he truly understood what had happened to him. Basically admitting that Sean, a video essayist, made him really understand what had happened to him versus watching the debate with Destiny, which simply made him stop being a full-on Sikh heiling Nazi. It's interesting that he talks about learning social structures and disavowing capitalism, but a lot of his content just really isn't about that. One of the most important things to happen over the last year for a lot of leftists is the wave of unionization that's happened across the US and the world. If Xander Hall was covering a lot of this, that'd mean a lot of people learning about a lot of good stuff. He's got one video that's 18 minutes of him covering the Staten Island warehouse unionization, but it's got woefully low views. Hell, I most. Well, I'm just confused here. So he doesn't do enough of the content that you would like to see. So don't watch him. 
But I mean, like, if he got low, like, he still did it. He got low views, but he still did it. Like, who cares? Okay. I know the feels on that one. My union video and activism content performs terribly. But let's talk okay. about his Joe Biden support. It's so interesting that in this video, quote, why I'm not Bernie or bust and you shouldn't be either, Zadahol talks about how he loves Bernie Sanders and Joe Biden is a creepy old man who has rape allegations against him. But more okay. recently, he just unironically tweets and retweets Joe Biden's Twitter or pro-Democrat stuff. Zan in this video also talked about Ruth Bader Ginsburg and how if she dies while Trump is in office, then women's rights, trans rights, and other civil rights are all on the chopping block. Funny then how all that still kind of happened, but he still supports Joe Biden and the Democrats. He focuses in this video a lot about harm reduction, but the harm has been done. It happened under Joe Biden and the Democrats. And Zanderhal used this platform to tell people that Bernie or bust is a bad thing. Okay, I get it. Not voting for a Democrat in 2020 would have been a disaster. But you didn't need to go full pro-Democrat either. Nuance is a thing and critical support is a thing. The main thing to take away from Zanderhal in this video is this. Revolution isn't happening in the foreseeable future. All we can do at this current moment is work within our current electoral system. Anybody who's still Bernie or bust at this point, there's no change. Yeah, I mean, I agree with that. It's, uh, you're probably not going to be able to, like, be that fucking radical and win out. Um, sure. Jesus, this boss is fucking obnoxious. This is really a fun boss fight where you have to run around, wait for your meter to get up so that you can actually do something. Uh, and then do something. They're really good game design, guys. Changing their minds, fuck them, okay? They don't give a shit about minorities or anybody uh, in this country um, uh, whose life Base take, dude. is on the line in this election. Okay. This is such a reductive take, and again, has been proven wrong by the fact that said minorities have suffered under Biden, as we previously discussed. So the question here is this. If Sanderhal loves Bernie... And the idea is that, like, you vote for the lesser of two evils. That would be his logic there. I think anybody would understand that. Bernie so much. Why is he so willing to claim that the majority of people who support Bernie don't care about marginalized people's rights? I think the argument is that like they're so focused on getting their guy to win that they rather uh, that they rather like not vote for the person that he would perceive as better, even if it would have a better impact on marginalized groups uh, over the other guy, right? So like the argument's like, hey, Joe Biden will be better for like black people, so we're better off voting Joe Biden because Bernie's not going to win. And then if you just do the or bust and don't vote, then you're basically throwing away your vote. I mean, that's pretty. <laughs> Like, that's just pretty obvious. But, so my theory is ah. this. As we said before, when Zanderhal said he lost a lot of faith in America after Trump was elected, he sees that as a catalyst for him going down the pipeline. So for him, beating Trump is paramount in that election because he sees his radicalization as Trump's fault. Which is true, as far as we can tell, Steve Bannon, who I've talked about on the channel before, was a big wig on Trump's campaign and literally wanted to radicalize gamers to the far right. However, what seems to be more important Buggers. to Zan and the nuance that Bernie or Busters have a point, or that even Bernie or Busters do care about marginalized people, is that Trump gets beat in the election. To Zanderhal, this is a cathartic thing that he needs, and to be fair, it actually was for a lot of Americans and people around the world. Especially people in a similar position to Zanderhal who got radicalized by alt-right beliefs and then realized that they've been taken for a ride. It's kind of like revenge for them, if you will. See now, what happens with revenge is that you become a bit blinkered and you lose sight of the bigger picture. Neoliberals are actually primed for this kind of worldview. You know, it's the I'm all right, Jack mentality. Uh, also, a bit of a sidetrack, but I just want to point out in this video, he says this. Nuking Japan was justified, though. It's sort of like a, a hard discussion, but yeah. Um, from what I've seen with all the arguments, it does seem like it, like the, okay. the good does outweigh the bad. And it really, it's like the train. It's like the, the trolley problem uh -oh. you know it's a really fucked up situation but we're not i mean i have no idea what he's talking about um but like i mean i okay uh, like i just don't care about it. i mean that's i don't know if it's a good take but i guess it doesn't really shock me because there's a lot of dumb fuck like bull, like uh base takes on the internet so i mean i'm not like super like that's probably i'm not like super shitting my pants over it, it sounds a little, just a little too base for me i'm gonna talk about that right now what Zanderhal then goes on to talk about all the bad things that are going to happen if Trump gets re-elected. <clears throat> Such as... The US will slip further into fascism. Roe v. Wade will get overturned. The attacks on LGBTQIA plus people will increase and continue. He Bro. also focuses on COVID-19, saying that it will continue to ravage the US unchecked. Let's uh, take a look at what happened under Biden. Um, the US has slipped further into fascism. Roe v. Wade has been overturned. Attacks on LGBTQIA uh, plus people have increased and continued. COVID-19... Well, I mean... Yeah, I guess a lot of, like conservatives still have a lot of control, so that's probably why those things happen. So are you saying that you shouldn't have voted Biden? It's like what's the argument here? Like I don't understand. Cuz you don't you like you're you're the, the choice was Biden or Trump. So are you saying that like his advocacy for getting Biden elected was bad because these things happen or do you think it would be better under Trump? Like what's your argument here? You don't even have an argument. It's weird. Dean is still ravaging the US. Oh god, I got this motherfucker. 
What's really interesting about Xanderhol and his ilk is that they are obsessed with electoral politics and seem to see it as the be all and end all despite identifying themselves as leftists and in some cases anarchists. I think that they're, I think the whole argument is that like, you know, you gotta sometimes you just have to work within the system to get shit done. I swear to God, if I can't get this fucking ability off, I'm gonna shit my mom, my mother's pants. From a more critical point of view in which you can easily observe and analyze electoral politics to be milk toast in achieving anything good at best, we understand that the most important thing to do, especially nowadays, is to organize, create instances of direct action and mutual aid in order to remove dependence on the state, build dual power, and eventually sever all ties with those who claim to govern us. This is the way. While Zan did indeed cover the unionization of the Amazon warehouse in Staten Island, this seems to be the only bit of his content that covers any kind of dual power structures at all. And to be honest, I think this is why Zander Hall and his community have such a hard time listening to marginalized people who criticize him, because his content is focused on working within the system, trying to change said system from within. Kind of like a- Christ, fucking white savior shit's annoying as fuck. If you were, why don't you just have like a black person on to talk about this shit? It's just like, oh, you have such a hard time listening to marginalized people. Like, bro, come on. You probably do the same shit. I don't know. I just, it just makes me uncomfortable when people say shit like that. It's weird. Um, well, have you seen an instance where he doesn't listen to marginalized groups? I don't understand, dude. Um, uh, what? A guy who joins the police force to try Minority and groups. make it better. And just like said cop, you either end up getting bullied out with a force huh? or becoming the thing that you hate. Okay. <laughs> Xander Hall abuses his position as a content creator to direct his fans to harass marginalized people or people he just disagrees with. Okay. Hopefully, it's not just Xander Hall saying, I disagree with this person. And then then making turning that into like a, you know, argument that he somehow called hate onto them. So, I want to preface this segment with this. I'm going to be- I'm going to get something to eat. Give me a second. Be talking about one of my best friends, Sophie from Mars. She is one of my favorite people. She's one of my co-hosts on Red Planet. She makes wow. me laugh. She has helped me build my channel to what it is today. She Why don't you just kiss already? <laughs> reinvigorated my love of all things based, and her eloquent commentary on the state of the world and what needs to be done today in order to improve the lives of people has inspired me to do the activism that I am involved with today. So in short, I'm biased. However, I'm well aware that bad faith actors won't care either way. So of course, I'm going to be biased as fuck in defending my friends. Fuck you. It's rad and cool and good, actually, to be biased and defend your friends. Also, I think the main thing to point out, in case you didn't figure it out, that's what people say when they want to protect their friend that sexually assaulted somebody. Good saying, bro. I'm not saying you shouldn't defend your friends. And I know that people tend to know their friends better so they can make like, they be like, no, they wouldn't do this. They have better interpretations on their uh, views. I'm just saying, bro. I'm just saying, dude already is that I'm extremely biased against the date bros anyway. So if your main criticism of this video is that I'm biased, then well, duh. It's actually cool no. to be biased against things that are bad. Also, it's one letter away from what? Okay. Beast. Xanderhal made a video earlier this year in May. It's called Lefty YouTuber Sophie from Mars is a lying joke. Now, I don't know why he didn't put any spaces in Sophie's name there. Uh, just a bit weird, but let's move on. Now, okay. the first thing I want to draw your attention to is how many views this video got. It's over 30,000. She said the N word multiple times. <laughs> is that what actually happened? And his videos where he talks about unions is at a measly 4K. And what the fuck is he supposed to do about that? How does he change that? You don't you don't get to decide who, how many views you get on a video, dude. I want you to remember this before we get into this segment. Every piece of content that Xanderhol makes where he is attacking a marginalized person, be it a woman, a trans person, um, a black person. Maybe they're just liars and people like to stir up the shit drama. The, like your argument is that he's shitting on these people because they're marginalized in some capacity. Maybe they're just like dishonest or bad in some capacity. Um... I know about the cat black thing, right? Isn't she? Didn't she say some like pretty intense genocide type stuff, like white genocide shit? And that's my understanding. And I think that that Noah Sanson. It, I think this all is about this. Is that the Professor Flowers person? I don't really know, but okay. Gets so many more views than any of his other content. His followers fucking love drama. Now, this video sucks for many reasons, but let's just have a look at the comments before we watch the video. And there's a reason that I'm doing this, and I'll tell you in a bit. Jesus fucking Christ, the aggression in her tweet. I don't see how people cannot see through such relentless, extreme language. It's a red flag, and I think there's a word for it, but I can't think of it. Oh, well. She couldn't just casually hate Bosch. It needs to be a great danger for everyone. Literally worst person ever. Which is wild, coming from someone who made video on Proud Boys. Okay, this one's funny as fuck to begin with, implying that there is aggression in a tweet. The reply is also extra funny because it's like, oh, you know, she's calling out someone who made video on Proud Boys. We don't even know the context of the video. It could be a video like saying that the Proud Boys are good. So why didn't you look at that for us instead of making it a question? It could be a video. Why don't you just go look it up for us? It feels a bit disheartening. You're a friend. It's a friend. I think of what little... 
you're her friend. Chance people give you. But please remember that they're so important and significant that they already have an opinion on you, while at the same time, they're not even known really outside their circle. Okay, this is super cringe. Calling Xander Hall important and significant and then to imply that Sophie's a nobody? Can you not understand numbers? Like, can you not see the difference here? I genuinely don't understand some of this stuff. I imagine Sophie's motivated reasoning is plain to see for most people who are being even slightly critical. So these angry Twitter rants aren't going to be particularly convincing for most. The audience for these tweets has to just be other people who hate Vosh, Zadahal, etc., which is bizarre. This cottage industry seems organic, because I think most of its contributors seem genuine, but it's functionally the same kind of astroturf entity which artificially gets created in other political online spaces all the time, so I wouldn't rule it out. There can't be much money in the anti-orbiter industrial complex, so I just can't see why anyone participated in it for business reasons, but they do seem determined to make an anti vosh Zand new meta. I don't think it has much chance of success, though. Oh boy, where to start with that one? Um, but I'm not really here to debate these comments. I'm just kind of here to show what kind of a picture is being painted about my friend. So let's move on. A lot of SAS just seems- Don't worry, I'm not here to listen to the comments. I just tuned out. I'm waiting for the real content to go. I'm just reading comments. So like, you're like, you're, you're, you're upset about the comments. And so like, we're listening to comments now for no reason. To viscerally hate streamers as a group at a level that strikes me as bizarre and unwarranted. What's the dealio? Okay, um, does this motherfucker know that there are more streamers than Xander Hall and Vosh? Sophie's, as I said, one of my best friends and I've been a political streamer for most of my content creation career. There are also plenty of other leftist Twitch streamers who do- You're a streamer? I'm not trying to be an asshole. What do you have to do to be considered a streamer? Debate bros. Like, I, I hung up pictures in my house. Am I, like, a fucking carpenter now or something? Or am I, like, a, you know, my construction worker? Yeah. I, I put that picture up on my... You know what I mean? Like, what's the... I'm not trying to be an asshole, but, like, okay. Whatever. Do not do debate content? Like, what are you talking about? I think it's honestly the Twitter anti-gaff culture. You get a lot of engagement for, um, actually comments. And less talented video essayists thrive off that shit. Meanwhile, Twitch is a live format, and every streamer that does it long enough is gonna say some shit that either sounds weird, out of context, was wrong but poorly thought out, That's usually refined true. later, or just misspoken, so they're an easy target. This is another huge assumption here. As I said, I- Hey man, you're always gonna say some dumb shit if you stream enough and people have enough eyes on you. For people who've streamed a lot but don't get any real attention, you're not gonna understand that because you're gonna think you said like everything fine. I'm fine. You say some dumb shit. You don't realize it. It just happens. Dude. Been streaming for a long time, six years in fact, and no one has out of contexted any of my content. Because nobody watches you. I'm not trying to be a fucking asshole. If nobody watches you, like you're not gonna know. Debate. Like how big is your stream? I'm assuming it's not. Like, your stream archives is a hundred followers. Um. I'm not trying to be a fucking asshole. Is he on Twitch? But. You have 6,000 followers. Yeah. You haven't streamed in six months either. So you got 60 views on this. Yeah, dude. When you have like. You're. you're, you're okay, I'm really not trying to be an asshole. But like your archived stuff has like 20 views on it. Three views, 12 views. My, you're not. You're not really a streamer. Just so you know, I'm not trying to be a dickhead, but you're not really a streamer. You're somebody who streams. You're never, you're never gonna get there's you there when you have ten. When, well, okay, so if you have six twenty views on this, that means like two people stopped in and they have a couple people. Like I'll get like um, I don't get a whole lot on Twitch. I get like maybe let's say like two hundred people on average on Twitch, something like that. But then I'll have like thirty five hundred views on the on the on the archive Twitch version of it, thirty thousand, thirty five hundred, you know, something like that. Maybe a little lower, whatever. That's not even that much. My YouTube is where I get most of my views. Like, and I don't, I don't, I don't stream on YouTube. But my point is, is that like you're not, you're getting like two people watching. So even if you had twenty people watching, like what, like they're not gonna see the out of context shit anyway. So, you know, I, I don't, I don't know what to tell you. Like, even if you have two hundred people, you're not watching. You're not getting enough views for people to be like, to, it, you. Nobody's checking you. So. And I know I'm going to have got some stuff slightly wrong in that time. You ever wonder why it's like always the debate bros that get this kind of stuff? It's always the debate bros who are clipped out of context or, oh, they just... Yeah, because people don't like them. ...bespoke. It's a live stream format. Everybody's going to get some stuff wrong eventually. So from all these comments, we're getting something. We're getting a picture yes. of our... What do you mean? Yeah, that's oh, happened. Sophie. They're building a profile of someone who their debate king... Do that person was actually seemingly defending your friend. Saying like, yeah, man, sometimes shit just happens on accident was not like and so it makes it easier for them to not like her either there are also multiple comments saying i used to follow sophie now i just can't so what could it have been that sophie did that was so reprehensible in the eyes of these people what did she say and why did she say it from these comments it really sounds like she's a hypersensitive overbearing terminally online monster so what is it what happened cherry pred is quote tweeting sophie in bad faith here about something that 
actually happened. Now, I have to bring this up because Luffy, in bad faith... So it was Vosh fans who had what the trans suspended for criticizing Vosh, what the trans is a community resource for trans people in the UK. Currently trying desperately to survive as our government is trying to strip us and rising. I don't know who this person is, but okay. About something that actually happened. Now, I have to bring this up because this is something that's mentioned in this tweet. So the sex cult stuff. I was actually going to include the sex cult drama in this video, but the main victim who spoke out against this has categorically said that she does not want people making content about what happened to her anymore. And so in situations like this, it's incredibly important to center the victim's voice. So I will not be talking about this stuff. However, with all that in mind and my actual knowledge of what happened, it is a extremely relevant thing for people to bring up about Xander Hall. So apparently just for believing victims, Sophie here is being labeled as a- So shouldn't you bring it up? I mean, how are we supposed to know what the fuck you're talking about unless you talk about it? I mean, I know that you're playing like the, oh, well, they don't want to talk about it. I get that. But then also, like, how much of that is because you're worried about them? How much of that is just because you want to appear, like, morally virtuous? There's a bad faith actor who is spreading lies about the community. Really interesting here that this is about what the trans, a trans community support network that does a lot of exposés on gender criticals and TERFs. The tweet in question here is when what the trans asked trans people who support Vosh why they support him when he's been so transphobic in the past. It didn't make sense. What the trans then talks about is how it was absolutely Vosh fans that Dogpile reported this tweet to get the account suspended. As I said, this is an account that helps trans people a lot. What the trans even mentions that gender criticals and TERFs normally don't bother mass reporting trans activist accounts. They tend to focus on popular cis allies or popular trans people themselves. I want to draw your attention back to this comment on the video. The aggressive tone being described here is not something that you can take from words on the screen that is Sophie's tweet. However, Xander Hall seems to be trying out for an Oscar here. His fans are belligerent, obnoxious, creepy chuds who harass and shame other content creators for expressing any disagreement with him in ways no other's community, no other creator's community ever does, ever does. So when Xander first stops reading the tweets in this hilariously villainous way, he says that, by the way, nothing here makes sense. He's clearly trying to paint her as having a breakdown and being unintelligible. This is something that we see debate bros do a lot, especially when they're attacking trans people who criticize them, trans women specifically. And this is to paint the idea that they're pushing too far in their politics and they spend too much time online and don't really have much interaction in the outside real world. This couldn't be further from the truth and not just in most of the trans women that debate bros send for online, but Sophie in particular. She has literally two videos here of her going and speaking at trans rights protests. This is more activism than I've seen from literally any fucking debate, bro. So, well, just because you, I mean, I'm, listen, I don't know too much about what's going on. But just because you do good things doesn't mean that you can't necessarily do bad things as well. Happy year. So like, oh, yeah, I was going out and I, I did transactive and that's cool. That doesn't mean that your online discourse is like amazing, you know? Talking about bad faith, this is bad faith in its entirety. While Xander Hall is talking about this, his chat further adds to the narrative that Sophie is a monster, calling her a psycho amongst all the bad faith arguments. Who is this Sophie? It's not the Sophie I know. The one that I've spent literal days with, who loves and cares about her friends. She uh, she's not gonna fuck you, bro. Come on. Loves and cares about her comrades so much and is desperate to get people to change the horrific world that we live in. I certainly okay. wouldn't call her a psycho. Just look at how easily his audience okay. eats this shit up. And remember, this is an audience that has a huge overlap with Destiny and Vosh. And so this is the main point in the video where I want to show that Xander Hall really doesn't understand the meaning of the word ally. An ally is not someone who uses marginalized people. In Listen, an ally isn't somebody who just blindly agrees with every person that would be uh, correlated with that group or associated with that group. I'm not saying that he. I, I don't know who's right and wrong because you're being so roundabout about everything. Like that, I have no idea what the fuck you're talking about. He made a video and they they made fun of his friend, so it's bad. That's I mean, that's all we just got showed. That's literally it. There was no in, like intelligent in, intelligent engagement from this in any capacity in their community to win arguments or support their biases. It's really funny because in my video that I did on Vosh, I had so many people in my comments telling me that it's good and correct to criticize Blair White and Candace Owens. I know for a start if you Okay, what's your point? Your cis and white. Well, isn't this isn't this like a isn't this an argument? Like, yeah, you should criticize those people. You know, it isn't your place to focus on those people. Wait, wait. Oh, so you have a mental disorder? So many people in my comments telling me that it's good and correct to criticize Blair White and Candace Owens. And well, you should criticize those people when they do the wrong thing. No, for a start, if you're cis and white, it isn't your place to focus on those people. All right, so this person's a fucking idiot. I'm sorry, but if your argument is is if you're not if you're not trans, you can't uh, criticize Blair White, and if you're not black, you can't criticize Candace Owens, dude. I, I the... bro, come on, what are you talking about? That's that. okay. Why? Why? Why not? Why?
Wow. It isn't your place to tell trans people and black people who best represent their community. Of course, those individuals mentioned are wrong about a lot of stuff, and it is an ally's duty to understand that marginalized groups are not monoliths and that these people don't represent the communities as a whole. No, if you okay. focus on that stuff instead of amplifying and signal boosting and supporting other creators who do that work, you are certainly not an ally. What? I mean, so you... <laughs> I don't understand. So let's say Blair White says like an ignorant thing about, or you feel they say an ignorant thing about trans people. You can't criticize that at all because then you wouldn't be, what? Instead you have to focus your content on signal boosting good, good content creators, the ones that you feel are good. So you can't do any criticisms of anybody. I'm confused. It is absolutely okay. not for cis people to say that a certain trans woman who disagrees with you is unhinged and bad, and then use the example of impressionable people who are already predispositioned to support you in your community in order to say that they are wrong. Oh, okay. Where's this overwhelming majority, Zan? Where are the figures? How many trans people are in your audience? And how many trans people support what Sophie has said here? Have you done the re- Oh, well, now, hey guys, hey listen, do, do me a favor. Collect all the trans people. Trans people are now currency. How many trans people are in your audience? How much social trans currency do you have this man? You know that's like condescending to a lot of trans people, right? Or people in general. When you're like, well, I have more of this in my audience, so that means that like I'm better. It's like, okay, people then now you're just like you're just collecting them like fucking Pokemon cards. I mean, that doesn't really make it much better. This is what we're, people are talking about when like it's like, oh, you could say a bad thing. Like you probably don't mean that, but like that's the thing that you're saying that you don't realize is like not good. You know what I mean? Oh. Research? Have you done the polling? Of course you haven't, because you are the terminally online individual who simply uses queer people for content and doesn't support us in any actual, kind of tangible way. And that's us. What are you? Are you trans or what are you bisexual or what is it that you are? Just wondering. Um, no. Since you're saying us, I'm just wondering what is a queer? What does your queerness mean to you? And then the I'd also ask, are you using it as a shield? I'm not saying that you are. I'm just saying that like it seems like there are some lefties who just use their queerness as a fucking shield all the time. Like, well, I'm queer, so I can do this. Like, okay, oh Jesus. Uh, okay, I think Vosh is actually. The, I've seen some clips of. Vosh. I don't remember exactly what of like using his like he's like, well, I'm bisexual or queer or something, so I can say this, that, other thing, you know. So doesn't that like not a good thing? In tea. Check out what he says here at the end of him reading the tweets. Political boundaries are not the line by which you should judge the moral character of YouTubers and streamers in this space or any public figure. <laughs> yeah. Yes, Xanderhal. You are so right, dude. Bro, what the fuck? Xanderhal even this? says that someone's political beliefs could be a good indication of their moral values, which is pretty funny because he supports the Democrats unironically and they are constantly throwing marginalized people under the bus just mm. like him. Democrats are bad, Republicans are bad. Just the 1% of the population that are leftists, they're the true heroes. They know exactly what they're talking about. By the way, guys, I have proof that that um, having conversations with people doesn't de-radicalize them. And it's a quote from a person that's book that I haven't read. You know, like, so later in the video, he says this. Uh, you will find four times out of 10, I'd say, that a content creator in your lane that you've discovered who you might want to collab with, become friends with, who you might even find enjoying their content and becoming sort of a fan of in a way, okay, already Dutch. hates you before you even know their name, <laughs> before you even knew they Based. exist. It's True. absolutely wild that he said that with no self-reflection on why this would be. Maybe the reason that people don't want to work with you and that your reputation precedes you is because you're a fucking man-child who throws his toys out of the pram every time a woman online disagrees with you. Why mm -hmm. would anyone want to work with someone like that, dude? One of the main things to take away from this 13-minute video is that he talks about why Sophie is bad for a grand total of two minutes and a couple of seconds, give or take. In okay. those two minutes, it's mainly hyperbole and ad hominem attacks. He doesn't deep dive into any of Sophie's content or any of her tweets. He just rambles about how she's a terrible person. Uh -huh. Xanahol also uses a sanest term here in the beginning of his video. The word Anus? in itself is widely regarded as a word that should never be used in any context. It's the shortening of schizophrenic. On the point of sanism... Oh, schizo? Why don't you just say the word schizo? What do you say, a sanest? What is sanest? What does that mean? Of sound mind? What? I'm so confused, dude. What does it mean? Um, I'm very confused about what's happening. It's just insane. I, it's a sanest. Is apparently somebody who is sane. I'm very confused. It would be ableist. I'm confused at this point. Zanahol seems to really focus on the fact that anyone who disagrees with him has mental issues. Now, Bro. as an ADHD, OCD, and anxiety-having oh boy, God. and big advocate for mental health... So fucking annoying when people do that. I actually have ADD. I have OCD. I have fucking... I'm dyslexic. Like, I get it. 
Um, like I just, I, it's annoying. Well, you know, as a person in the community, like sh shut the fuck up. I just, I'm so, I'm tired of that kind of shit. Like, I mean, uh, you, uh, come on. Like, I just, it, 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 I don't know, dude. Maybe I'm just too fucking, um, maybe I'm too, um, what's the word? Jaded or something, but it just feels like people use that as like a oh, well I'm I'm I well, like I can technically say that I I'm I can identify with the disabled community, but like my shit doesn't really get in the way. Uh, maybe his does like not enough for me to be like oh my god guys like I'm you know it's just annoying. I hate when people do this like fucking shit uh, when they like fucking um, when they like stack their uh, their issues. Because I feel like, yeah, everybody's going to have some kind of problem, but you don't have to wear it on your sleeve or use it as like a defense mechanism. That's just how it comes off. I hate it when people do that shit. Uh, health awareness. What I like to try and remind people as often as I can is that pretty much everybody has mental health issues. It's kind of part and parcel of living under capitalism. So this... Okay, you, it's just because of capitalism. It's, everybody, People will have mental health issues in general, regardless of whether they're under capitalism or not. It's nothing to do with capital. What the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> this is so stupid. Do you think people who don't live under capitalism don't have mental health issues? That's just dumb. Scapegoat is kind of one that you could use for just about anybody if you do like a minute or two of digging into their content or social media posts. Ah. Also, this big thing where he implies that people with mental issues need validation from the internet, from fake internet points, is a huge sweeping statement that misses a lot of important things to remember. Namely, that not everybody with bad mental health issues is actually on the internet. This paints a pretty bad picture of people like me who suffer from learning disabilities, are neurodivergent, and or suffered from structural sanism and or- Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, learning disabilities. <laughs> Oh, my ADHD gets in the way. Oh, I fuck. I'm tired of it. Yeah, mine did too. I had to go on medication. I get it. It's just annoying because it's usually like people who you could you could tell don't really struggle that much with their shit. Like they had the access to like some kind of financial like shit that helped them out a bit. They whether it was some kind of medication uh, or with some kind of like special health class or something like that or like you know um, you know whatever classes they need. And then they're the ones that are crying the most about oh this was real struggle. Oh my god, it's fucking boring. So annoying. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe this guy, uh, maybe this guy doesn't do well financially. But anybody who streamed for six years and hasn't really made it, I just like I question how you're able to sustain yourself. You know, for a long time, I had to work like two fucking jobs because I didn't have the money to live. So how the fuck are you guys underachieving to the point where you get to like fucking stream for six years? I don't know, dude. Maybe I'm just fucking jaded. Maybe I'm wrong. That's just the energy I'm getting. But I could be wrong. I don't want to just say I'm absolutely correct here. I'm just saying though, bro. What you want to know? What's really annoying though. Is that this character, Barrett, is like the slowest character in the game. And I don't get it because he's also black. So why doesn't he run faster? It really doesn't, doesn't make any sense to me. Or ableism. The important thing to remember about this is that Sophie, a trans woman, received a relentless amount of harassment, not just from Xander Hall's community, but from debate bro communities as a whole, just oh. for this thread. This two minutes of hyperbole and conjecture have resulted in some of the worst harassment that my friend has ever seen. And if you know about the effects that online harassment has on people, then you don't need me to tell you just how bad that was for Sophie. Yeah. It actually yeah. makes me sick just how easy these nerds could turn their communities against marginalized people who disagree with them. And listen, I mean, listen, if they're turning it against you, her, that her because of um, because she's marginalized then sure. But if maybe she's just an annoying trans person and like then it would be then it would be transphobic not to criticize her because then you then you'd be like, well, I'm not applying an equal level of criticism towards somebody because that is trans for a bad take that may not have anything to do with transness. I don't really know. You know what I'm saying? I'm just saying, dude, you can't, you have, you can't just, if, if they're, if they're criticizing her because she's trans, that's transphobic, but maybe they're just criticizing her because she's wrong about something else. I don't really know. You haven't really done a good job of showing us what the fuck you're talking about. But, uh, yeah. It doesn't matter if you have disclaimers in your video or in your description saying, please don't harass them. Please don't harass them. That's it can work. It's the responsible thing to do. It can help a little bit. Is this thing going to blow up? Not what I want because the very, I mean, it's not going to stop at all, but at the end of the day, like, you know, nature of drama. I'll never make a disclaimer like that. Harass, harass away, fellas. Harass away, guys. <laughs> <laughs> content and debate culture on the internet has already primed people to behave in that way anyway. So I want to go back to the comment section again here, just to bring this up. She works with Bad Bunny. That's all you need to know. So his community- It was Bad Baby. I think it was Bad Bunny. ...here implying that Sophie's relation to Kira Chat's old name Bad Bunny and another of my good friends is another reason for steering clear of her? But what exactly has Kira done? 
Okay, so oh, the Kira Chat situation is a little bit different to the Soapy situation. And while I don't want to say that one form of harassment is worse than the other with this, I do want to point out that my friend Kira has had outright misogynist harassment directed towards her from huge YouTube channels such as Penguin Zo, aka Critical. I mean, listen, Here, here's the thing. Right off the bat, I'm not a big avid watcher of, of Moist Critical, okay? I don't know what the video is about. Frankly, I'm not going to watch it because this video is already giving me an actual... It's actually um, ruining my life as I watch it. But what I will say um, is that he's usually pretty on par with what he talks about. And so there's probably a reason to dislike whatever she's done. <laughs> so, you know what I mean? I mean, he's usually pretty unbiased. And that's just based off of his track record. If he walked it back, you know, he tends to walk things back that he gets wrong or he feels he gets wrong. So, like, what? It looks like she's greedy. Um, the H3H3 H3 podcast and pretty much every single debate bro you can think of since 2020 and a little bit earlier, I think. I've been in Kira's Twitch community for a good few years now. And of course, she is one of my co-hosts on Red Planet. The main issue that these huge YouTubers had with Kira is this. 12 million views. Hold on. How did my whole speech about how I need subs to get the stream going if you like the content, blah, blah, blah. How that result in zero subs? There are regulars here. Five dollars a month. <laughs> How are you have hours of time to watch me and not five dollars? I don't know. What are you doing with your life where you have hours of time to watch Twitch and not five dollars to provide for the content that you're watching? Because it's like people just really have no... I mean, listen, she's she's speaking a little bit of facts, guys. No, in all honesty, like you, you, you do this and you hope you get subs or not. And if you don't get it, then that's life, brother. But okay. She does have a little bit of a point, though. If you're watching, like, 100 hours a week or, like, fucking 20 hours a week, you don't have $5 for a month, you know what I mean? You know, you're, you're just a poor loser. But at the same time, I'm just fucking around. Not everybody has all that money. I'm just fucking around, guys. Don't worry. <laughs> I'm just busting jobs. Um, maybe get a new job. If you don't have people who are watching your shit, maybe get, like, another real, a real job is what we'd call it in the uh, real world. You know? Oh, they really don't respect me as a content creator. Well, this parasite's right about one thing. Nobody respects her as a content creator. I'm not gonna mention this streamer by name because I'm pretty sure she loves negative publicity. She does fucked up shit all the time just to get her name out there. She subscribed. Uh, okay, she does a lot of fucked up shit all the time. To the idea that all publicity is good publicity, but fails to realize that when you as a person are your own brand and rely on people liking you for money, having a negative public image literally fucking ruins you. And this one is definitely bigger than she anticipated because no one likes someone this shamelessly greedy. She is a streamer who runs political talk shows, but the majority of the stream is spent begging and shaming people into giving her money. And it's some of the most pathetic shit I've seen on Twitch. And I've seen a lot of pitiful sad shit on Twitch. I saw a man finger his butthole for a twenty dollar donation on Twitch, and I still have more respect for that than I do her. At least all right, that's enough that I have to hear. Let's keep going. This clip that I'm sure some of you even recognize. How did my whole speech about how I need subs and to get the stream going if you like the content, blah blah blah, how that results in zero subs? There are regulars here. Five dollars a month. Now, as oh, most people yeah. in Kira's community know, this Bitch. attitude that she has is a stream persona. She's got ah, so Moist was right. So explain to me how it's different for somebody to pretend to be a greedy asshole and somebody who pretends to be like racist like the ultimate uh, it was just a joke is that's what we're saying like that like that's your whole argument you it's just a joke and you fell for it idiot that's your whole argument bro come on it's just a character i just pretend to be a minecraft cat i'm actually 10 years older than i really like what the fuck is this What's the joke? She's an asshole. She's being an asshole. Like, like what? That's like that's like if you play a character all the time, and 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 how am I supposed to know that? Okay, whatever. <laughs> okay, whatever, dude. Then like then she's looking to do that for like some kind of a reaction. So she got her reaction. You know, maybe you shouldn't. Uh, you shouldn't have been begging for that reaction one of the nicest most understanding communities that i've ever been a part of on twitch and she really does a lot of amazing content and shines a light on issues that are woefully underrepresented in the online leftist twitch space yeah like not enough money for people for example at the moment recently she's been going hard on the israeli genocide of palestinians wow but well then she, you can't criticize somebody who does a good thing because they're everybody's 100 percent good for some reason men on twitch.television and youtube.com yeah. kind of stand to see a woman doing political content and just absolutely that is exactly what's communicated to me there Somebody begging for money. Um, <laughs> what? You're, dude, you're such a dishonest piece of shit. <laughs> you're a fucking idiot. This guy's, dude, come on. 
And, okay, so based on the fact that you're pretend, like you're hiding behind, she's, you're you're basically having her hide behind her the fact that she's a woman. That just suggests to me that I was right about like everything that I was talking about before. Like you're hiding, you're, like everybody, you're all hiding behind like your fucking shit. You can't criticize anybody if you can't criticize a woman because she's a woman. You can't criticize a trans person because they're trans, even if it has nothing to do with what you're criticizing them for. I mean, this is pathetic and embarrassing. This this uh, this is the point in the video where we where we understand your entire video is literal fucking dog shit garbage. I mean, that's really what it comes down to. This is embarrassing like this is why people don't respect you as a person or a content creator because like this this because of this it's not it's not something that to be respected this is fucking ridiculous absolutely need to make a takedown video of her because she no. is just so bad because she's if a bad bunny doesn't have a negative opinion about you you're not doing enough for progress bit of a fucking telling name there terminally online leftist <laughs> you're just implying that if she doesn't like you you're a good person i wouldn't go after her for being a clout chaser all youtubers and twitch streamers do this to an extent the difference is that bad bunny has absolutely no principles or ideology other than what her clout value on tonight hmm i have no idea who she is because i really don't care about her but True. this behavior reminds me of the quote unquote inclusive karen that love the sound of their own voices way too much at retail. <laughs> I just met one today, and she was ranting about boots not being inclusive for thick people, which I agreed, and tried to lecture me about shoe size differences for men and women. I just phased out from there. Afterwards, yes. she left 20 pairs of shoes lying all over the floor for me to pick up and resort after she dumped her spiel. That's the kind of energy I'm getting right now. Thank you, Barbara Worst Women. Are you trying to say like Wamans? You know, like anti SJWs do with your name? I don't know what's going on there. So the comments here are positioning her as a clout chasing woman who simply does things for money and not because she has any actual moral standpoints or ideology at all. So even if she had, let's say that she has like a robust, like blah, 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 blah. Maybe she's actually not getting pissed off at this game right now. Let's say that she has like a robust, like, you know, she's really great. She does really good things for this, that, that, blah, 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 right? So let's say she's amazing, but she decides to portray herself in this way for attention. What do you think people are going to hook onto? <coughs> the potential positive stuff or the fucking trolling bullshit? If anything, your argument easily is, is that she doesn't care about her activism enough to make her persona be a serious character and would rather prioritize trolling just for attention over actual real activism so if anything like the argument just crumbles on yourself the argument here is really just that like apparently she doesn't respect herself or her audience or her message enough to make it more to, to present herself in a more serious way apparently destiny stopped her from being so radical interesting just a prank guys so it's also worth mentioning that Kira, just like Xanderhal, had a bit of a chud phase. One that she's actually really open about and reference. <laughs> Look, this guy's going to talk about how Destiny fucking de-radicalized her right now. Well, that's not good for your video. That's shitting on Destiny, huh? This is regularly even on her stream today. Wow. Which is good to see because when people are unlearning a lot of the stuff they learned in formative years regarding politics and people's civil rights, they can often forget that it was incredibly easy to fall down the rabbit hole of alt-right opinions. Something that Xanderhal should be incredibly familiar with, no? Considering... What? Yeah. Isn't that why he wants to debate other people that disagree with him so he can pull other people out of the radicalization hole this 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 video undoes itself ah. this he also said in his last video on sophie that hunter avalone who is a former right-wing nazi white supremacist can i don't think he was ever a nazi uh, i i i'm pretty sure he was conservative but that doesn't make him a fucking nazi he was just a conservative fucking christian we're not not everybody's a fucking nazi what the fuck really just destroying what words mean at this point how do you think like a world war ii survivor would feel like a fucking like our Holocaust survivor. It's like, yeah, this guy that has our conservative views. He's a Nazi. This guy's like, I was, I was starved almost to death in a camp, and you're gonna tell me that that's a Nazi? You dumb fucking terminally online moron. Like you guys are embarrassing. Conservative is an example of someone whose politics were bad, but is a good person. But apparently, that grace is not extended to Kira Chats. Wonder why. He goes on oh, to say that he found out that he yeah, was banned true. in Kira Chat's stream, and then says... Now, would you guys like to guess what exactly got me banned and blocked by uh, Bad Bunny here? Now, it's not because uh, of any... Um, I'm, I'm not, like, trans or gay or anything like that, or bi, so it's not because of her bigotry, so I, I will let you guys know it is not because... He's not bi? What the fuck's up with the hair then, dude? What the fuck is that? Damn, brother. You should've just told people you're bi. You look like a fucking idiot. I'm just kidding, dude. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I am part of any marginalized groups that uh, Bad Bunny has um, a bigotry towards. <laughs> well, I see what you've done there, Xander Hall. You have made a loaded <laughs> statement. You present. I don't like what you're doing here, yeah. ...it offering Kira as a bigot without actually providing any evidence that she is... Kind of what you're doing here. Yeah. ...a bigot now, and that that is a reason that she would ban you from her community 
now. Or that even when she was a bigot in any way that she would like ban you for being bisexual or trans. He then talks about how she had a bit of banter with him when he went into a stream one day and she asked him what he was up to today. And when he said he would be streaming later, she popped off at him. Now, it kind of sounds to me like she was having a bit of banter with him considering that a lot of streamers think that that is self-promo. It literally sounds to me like- You're telling me she went to the stream and then trolled him? What? The kind of joke that me and Kira would share if I went into her chat nowadays. Okay, so she did a dumb bad thing, and I don't. Uh, this this video is all over the place. So she she was an asshole to him, and that's why they don't. Okay, cool. But apparently, this was just like lost on Xander Holly. Just like doesn't understand what like having a bit of a laugh is. Ah, uh, he's just a prank, bro. <laughs> Dude, I mean, like, holy fuck! You're like this is just like this is just incel behavior at this point. Yeah, he just clearly didn't understand that it was a joke. Harat, like being annoying to him was just a joke. Like, get take a joke, idiot. My friend and I do this. Yeah, that's because it's your friend. Your friends and you know people usually who are friends have different interactions from people you know that aren't friends. So just to explain like why Kara might have made a joke about this, there is a certain sect of Twitter where streamers absolutely pop off about the fact that even saying that you are a streamer or mentioning that you might stream at all in another streamer's chat is the worst thing that you could possibly do, and you. It's annoying, I'll tell you that, when people do it to me, yeah. You deserve to be banned from the community for doing that. It's absolutely Whatever. ridiculous. I Whatever, I don't care. There's people who come in here, I ban them. Like, they'll come in, and they'll promote themselves, and I'll be like, okay. Like, I'll let, I'll, sometimes I'll let them do one. And then after that, I'll, I'll be like, okay. And then sometimes they spam, I'm like, okay, I'm just gonna ban you. Like, you're annoying. Like, that's not what the stream is for. The stream isn't, like, for you to fucking jerk yourself off here, you know? Um... Yeah, I'm going to... Oh, can't leave the fire. I have so much to say about streamers who just don't like self-promo, but that's for another fucking... That's because you're a small streamer. <laughs> You've never dealt with the annoying, the, the annoyingness of self-promoting assholes. I get it. Get on your grind, but it doesn't mean I have to be fucking complicit in it, dude. So, whatever. This guy's weird. Time. In all honesty, I think that this was a bit of banter in an attempt to make friends with Xanderhol, who she clearly had heard about previously and knew was a streamer. Then our man Zan says that she started ignoring his messages. Now, listen, Kira's chat goes at a million miles an hour, compared to me anyway, uh, and I find it hard to read all the messages in my chat, and I've only got like a half or even a third of what Kira's chat and viewership has been at some points. So... What? Where? What's your viewership? I, do you have like a playlet? You, you don't even have anything alone. Like, what? Whatever. Okay. So that's that explained. He then says that when he realizes that he was blocked by her on Twitter, he went to her stream to ask her while she was live about why he was blocked on Twitter and he got banned from the Twitch chat too. After which, someone told him that she tweeted that she knew that Xander Hall was a creepy debate bro weirdo. And of course. Wasn't she just in there to have some playful banter? Why would she think that after she tried to troll? I don't understand. How are you going to put the argument up that like she went in there to have a little cheeky fun with him on just like a little uh, just being a little ironic because hey, it's just to be playful and then turn around and go like, yeah, she didn't like him. How do those things? How do those two things coexist? <laughs> explain, explain that to me. Really, please explain that to me. Personally, I think that's an absolutely fine reason to ban anybody from your community. OK, now what's it just doesn't line up with what you just said. So, oh, you don't want to my fucking tits pushed right now. Fuck. Okay. Really fucking frustrating here is that Xander Holt again does no self-reflection here and turns to the attack on Kira. Well, he'd already begun the attack at the start of the video, but he then goes hard and okay. brings up her past alt-right opinions and even brings up some screenshots that are fairly popular amongst people who like to harass Okay, like to harass her? What's the screenshot say? Let's see. Uh, thank you, I hate blacks. Oh, for your information, I hate blacks. I lynch black people for fun. Um, uh, he actually started crying. Some of these people are so fucking autistic. Jesus fucking Christ. It's so hard to troll them now. Uh, okay, guys, how funny would it be if I went full lefty for a while just to see where it goes? Wow. Uh, okay. I wonder why they would bring those up. I wonder why they would bring up uh, things of her saying, apparently, uh, that she doesn't like black people. And that also she's going to pretend to be a leftist for a while. So that kind of contradicts the whole, she's a good leftist person. How do we know that she's not just like performing? Very based. Very based. I'm assuming that's the lightest of the stuff you felt like you could show. Those aren't good messages. I don't know. <laughs> she's just trolling, guys. She's just pretending to be racist. God, she's just pretending to be racist. Okay. Very funny troll. Thank you.
um Rasa? where she said slurs in discord channels and all he really does here is just say that she's like a clout chaser and a bigot and he also talks about how he's got like so it sounds like what she is to me i don't know so much evidence that she's like a grifter and a bigot but this is all stuff that she's done in the past dude and it's all stuff that she's apologized for and has done so much work to unlearn and try and make amends for the bad that she did to people that nothing really stands up regarding that like wow you know an ally of marginalized people wow i just got fucking erect an ally of marginalized people wouldn't allow somebody to just be incredibly racist and apparently even people are saying that she even said the n-word in her shit too they wouldn't allow her to just be incredibly racist and just be able to walk away from that and be like no 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 i'm a good person now i mean come on dude how are you how are you it's i do find it a little ironic that he's like virtue signaling about how like oh uh you can't uh, criticize black content creators unless you're black or you can't criticize trans content creators unless you're trans by the way my friend who's was was at the very least at one point incredibly really racist and was uh joking about pretending to be a leftist she's changed and you need to give her a second chance why why would you need to give her a second chance? I'm not saying don't. I'm just saying, like, you know, to me, it's possible that she was just kind of edgy and an asshole, and we've all been there. But, like, how are you going to, like, play this fucking virtue signaling bullshit game and then turn around and be like, no, 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 she's my friend. How are you going to defend a white woman so much? How are you going to defend those white woman tears, Dr. Robotnik? How are you going to defend those white woman tears? You don't really have that much evidence that she is a bad person now. You're just pissed off that your reputation I mean, and how you're harmed. I mean, if she said the N-word, that's probably decent evidence to say that she might be kind of a bad person. No? It's probably decent. Decent enough. Um, but okay. For bastard preceded you once again, and it prevented you from networking with someone who is actually a really cool content creator. And if you want to talk about how people have got evidence that someone is not, a but... grifter and a clout-chasing piece of shit, well, I mean... You're watching this video, right? Yeah, you are probably a grifting clock chasing piece of shit, right? Is that what you're saying? This video in which I wrote 15,000 words about you doing exactly that, but now- That's crazy. How the fuck are you- Like, it's one thing to like, f to be dumb off the cuff, like I do on Twitch, where I'm like, oh, I've got something wrong, but I'm just like speaking from the heart, you know? Another thing to plan to say some of these things. Like, did you not re- you didn't reread this or rewatch it and go like, mm, shit, you know, there's a lot of, uh, there seems to be some areas where uh, I, I'm, I'm acting like kind of a fucking idiot. Like, you didn't think about that? Uh, he spends like 10 minutes talking about how she had harmful opinions in the past and does nothing to talk about the fact that she's left all that behind and realized how bad it was. Blah, blah, blah. He just okay. skips a bunch of so- Again, I mean, it's hard to if she said, I'm basically going to pretend to be a fucking leftist for a little bit, um, you know? Called evidence because there's too much of it. Bro, bro, look at the length of this video. You clearly don't care about this as much as you're saying you do. Again, the point okay. he tries to make here is that when people have had bad opinions in the past, you need to hold them to account forever. Despite his love of Hunter Ravel- Uh, I don't know if that's necessarily true. Where does he- Can you show me him saying that? ...alone and other right-wingers who have denounced their alt-right past, even though the time period in which that? these people turned around was more recent than Kira herself. He then plays an old clip in which Kira says she would not- Wait, why can't you show me the instance of where he says that? Despite his love of to make here is that when people have had bad opinions in the past, you need to hold them to account forever. Can you show me him saying, why can't you show me him saying that? You're showing me the video. Why can't you show me him specifically saying that you need to hold people who've said bad things uh, on those forever? What's possible that he said is like, hey, just because somebody said something a long time ago doesn't mean that they don't agree with it and you should push them. Like, let's say 10 years ago, you say, I hate um, hamburgers, right? I hate hamburgers. And then today, you know, you're like, hey, listen, do you still hate hamburgers? That's a fair question. How are you supposed to know? Maybe he's talking about that. Maybe he does think that no one's be uh, that nobody can be redeemed. We don't know. Why can't you just show me that? Why are you not showing us that? You're supposed to be showing us this stuff. Sometimes you'll show a clip if it supports your perspective, or at least you think it does. But now you're not going to show us a clip, or uh, like. Despite his love of Hunter Avalon, you're going to move on to a clip that he says about her. That alt right past, even though the time period in which these people turned around was more recent than Kira herself. He then plays an old clip in which Kira says she would not have said. Hey, with only, I only want to see Kira turn around if I can see her ass. Am I right, guys? <laughs> Misogyny is a beast. Guys, don't worry. They're just jokes, and I'm doing a lot to unlearn my biases. Am I going to die here? Oh, he's going to die. With all date, a bisexual guy, which is something I, as a bisexual... What did you say? Then plays an old clip in which Kira says she would not have sex with or date a bisexual guy, which okay. is something I, as a bisexual... I wouldn't date a bisexual guy either, to be honest with you. I'm just not bisexual or gay, so... Man, I'm very familiar with as an opinion. If a guy yeah. is, like, having sex with other guys, and then he's like, oh, maybe I'll try having sex with you, I'm like... Uh... <laughs> 
Now, of course, the way that Kira says it here is problematic for many reasons, but again, but this is a joke. And we're missing the point that this is something she said in the past and oh. wouldn't dream of saying this nowadays because she understands the harm it would cause. And as a bi guy, I just want to say for anyone listening here. Well, listen, as a, I know that you really want to fuck this girl, but apparently she's already made it clear she would not have sex with you as a bisexual, so. If this is something that you think, <laughs> fine. I don't want to fuck or date someone who has an opinion like this anyway, and I'm not yeah, going to lose well, sleep about people having opinions like this when I know that there are plenty of people who want to fuck me or date me. But if you change... Where are they? Count them. Show me. I d disagree. <laughs> Based. If you mind about that and realize why you said those things were bad, then of course I'm ready and willing to forgive you. This is a very popular opinion that people have about M-Spec men. It's a common thing, and people are going to have this opinion because they've been conditioned to by the hierarchies of homophobia and the nuclear family that are imposed on us. It's not right, and it needs to Maybe. Maybe some people just think bisexual guys are a little too feminine for them. I'm not trying to, like, say that it's okay, but, you know, like, you know, some bisexual... You, you're a little feminine. Destiny's very feminine. Xander Hall is definitely bisexual, dude. He's very feminine, you know what I mean? Like, you guys... I mean, I wouldn't want to date you... <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it's possible. I don't know, man. Maybe people just don't. I don't know. I have no fucking idea. It's a change, and there's a lot of work that needs to be done to do that. But in the grand scheme of things, in terms of evidence you could use against Kira to point out that she's a hateful person, this is a reach. I also want to point out that someone in Xander Hall's chat here uses the command clip chimp. And Zan's chatbot nice. responds with an emote and a cheeky little photographer, Zan, with the word clippers. Now, in Twitch lingo, these are phrases that, that imply oh. someone needs to clip this content oh. out of context and post it to r slash livestream fails on Reddit, thus instigating harassment towards that person, either on Twitter or on their Twitch channel themselves. And you better believe this is something that Kira got harassed for. Albeit, it was a drop in the ocean of the regular harassment that she receives. Well, don't you think she deserves it? Because at the time she believed that, right? But that is no excuse. Zan also, for some reason here, says that he doesn't want to come across as defending Bad Bunny, despite the fact that at the start of the video, he said this. So Bad Bunny... Yeah, maybe somebody wouldn't want to date a bisexual person because it's possible that they won't feel fully fulfilled in a relationship. I don't know. That's just a question. I'm sure that not everybody needs to do that. Although I know my wife is like, um, she's a little she's a little gay, and she doesn't feel the need at all. She's very obsessed with me, so I guess that's a kind of a silly point to make. But it's, it gets into a conversation about like bisexual eraser erasure right because if you're dating one person like you know you're dating a dude i mean you're not gonna date any girls anymore so then it's like you're you're basically your bisexuality is almost erased in some capacity right that crazy that's crazy dude what a fun conversation what a cool how do i fucking throw this thing at this asshole what the fuck uh, I learned about her mostly because of the Destiny drama, and I wasn't entirely convinced by the reasons that Destiny gave for why we ought to dislike Bad Bunny. Like, it just didn't come off to me as entirely, um, like, va like, valid for everybody to just all of a sudden decide Bad Bunny's a piece of shit and just disregard her and refuse to engage okay. with her or anything like that or be friends with her just because Destiny says she's mean or whatever. Like, it just didn't sit well with me. If you value logic and reason, and that's the thing that debate bros love to talk about, then why wouldn't you take someone's good points along with the bad? Such as what I'm trying to do in this video. But check this out. Now... A lot of people over the years who have had criticism of Bad Bunny have said more or less the exact exact same thing. And I'll admit that I made a counter argument to this, along with people who would oh. defend Bad Bunny, that uh, people who have this opinion are probably just being biased by the fact that she's a woman, and that when a woman engages Maybe. in this type of humor, it comes off as being bitchy or rude or as narcissistic or whatever, but when men do it, it comes off as 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 uh, suave or like, oh, what a he's kind of a Maybe. douchebag, but he's funny about it, so it's okay because he's a guy. He's literally correct here, so why does he go back on it? Well, I'm just confused. Aren't you saying that, like, her trolling... Isn't her trolling part of, like, the whole, like, um, being racist and shit? So, like, why would you defend that in general? Christ, how do I... Oh, I should block it. Oh. I'll tell you why he goes back work. on it and calls her mean. Because that is what his entire channel is all about. Drama, clout, revenge, and grift content. Okay. And I can say with 10,000% certainty that Kira is not this evil, mean monster oh, that Zan is making her out to be. Oh, I've been please. in hours and hours of Discord calls with her, personal calls, meetings, DMs, wow. and she is one of the sweetest, most lovely people that you could ever meet. Yeah, it's interesting about that, because I actually had a, I was supposed to have a KKK member, and they were actually really nice. <laughs> no, no, just kidding. But, uh, like, okay, like, you're, they're nice to you personally. Cool. This is a character assassination video, and it is inexcusable. This is exactly the same video. as the one he made about Sophie. It's also absolutely ridiculous that he rambles on about Kira just being close to people for clout as well, because he is absolutely close to Vosh and Destiny for clout too. Like, uh, come on, man. This is all projection, on, and we bro. can see it a mile off. I also want to make a big point here that Kira's harassment has been so intense that she has lost a lot of her viewers on oh. Twitch and YouTube. Maybe she just kind of sucks. Maybe that's why she lost all her viewers. I don't know. Despite the constant barrage of harassment that she gets doing her job on a daily, no, hourly basis, she has been steadfast in her... But did, didn't we just establish that she likes to say provocative things for views? Like, 
That's what happens when you save provocative things for reviews. You can't just say everything's just a fucking joke and everything's just a meme. I mean, sometimes they are, but it sounds like she does this shit all the time. At least that's what uh, Moist Critical said, uh, our lord and savior, guys, okay? Her left-wing opinions. Woo. And she is always doing her best to unlearn the harmful behaviors that she had in wow, the past. Wow, that's and crazy. She does all this, despite... Well, yeah, but as a white person, how are you going to forgive her for the bad shit that she's done? You need a black person to do that, okay? That's your logic, okay? You need a black person to forgive her, and then we can start liking her again, okay? We gotta use uh, black people as tokens. They're the only ones that can forgive her. Okay. The drop in clout that she is supposedly farming from having pretend opinions on the internet. I mean, yo, know, she literally said that. Okay. I mean, whatever. come on, people. You can clearly see that this is absurd and has no basis in reality. It, nah, not at all, dude. It sounds like you're coping hard as fuck because you want to fuck this girl or something. Is simply the system. But she won't have sex with you because she's like, bye, guys. <laughs> <laughs> the destruction of a woman on the internet simply because she chose to be outspoken and make political content. Seriously, if you're watching this and you have any empathy or sympathy for I Kara's don't. position at all, I don't. please okay. go and show her some love. You won't regret it. What do you want me to do send her a dick pic? What the fuck do you want me to do, bro? Come on. She is more than worthy of your time. So there's a little rule of three that I'm trying to bring into my content here, and I'm going to try and stick to that going forward. So I'm going to finish this video with a third and final and perhaps one of the worst character assassinations that Xanderhal has done on his channel. Okay. And that is of his ex, Lani. Oh, shit. What did she do? Xanderhal made his ex-girlfriend homeless and then made content out of it. <laughs> is that what he actually did? Jeez. <laughs> what does that mean? Did he break up with her and then she had to move out so she didn't have a home? Is that what we're saying? Or did he, like, fucking, like, get her full of drugs and then start filming her and laughing? Oh, boy. This is a lot. Strap in everybody. Right. Lani, aka Pastel Leftist, was Xanderhal's partner for two and a half years, according to the twit longer she posted about him in July. I guess we're reading the twit longer. I guess we're reading the tweet longer. Uh. All right. Can't read it all. So if you've been wondering what happened to me, having uh, to type this on my phone, so please excuse shitty formatting typos. Not happy about having to do this, but I don't know what other choice I have. Um, a week ago, or a few weeks ago, Xander Hole ended our two and a half year long relationship by dumping me with a text message while I was at work. I mean, that's shitty, but okay. He accused me of cheating, being a drug addict, and stealing from him. For the record, no, I did not cheat on him. Okay, so I didn't cheat on him, but she's just, okay, I've, I've used drugs recre recreationally many times in my life. In fact, I've never hid from him, but the only things I'm addicted to are cigarettes. Uh, and I wasn't stealing from me either. A couple of months back, my car was broken into a while. I was at work, and my laptop was stolen along with my purse and my trunk. I did 100% uh, of the groceries, shopping, and household errands for us. So Alex's debit card was in my purse. Uh, Alex now believes I made everything up, blah, 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 blah. I broke and stole drugs. I do not know where he's got the idea because he wouldn't have a real conversation with me about any of this. When he tried to dismissing anything, uh, I tried to say by calling a master manipulator. Okay, so he called her a master manipulator. Effectively shutting down any Okay. So he broke up with her. I don't really care. Then he demanded that I come home from work, pack up my cat Luna, everything I own, into my two-door Ford Focus, and move out instantaneously when i explained to him that there was no way i could just move out that quickly he threatened to rehome my car unless i came and got her then i wasn't going to drag my 13 year old cat around the desert in the summer heat in my car i had to fit uh while well, i tried to figure out what i was going to do so i told her she was staying there for the time you told the cat she was saying okay but that i would try to stay away as much as possible for the next couple of weeks i could i couch surfed and slept in my, in my car only stopping in the house to see Luna's. uh changes clothes wait luna's a cat okay why does why wait luna's a cat why do you need to see luna change clothes okay at some point while i was um, gone alex packed up his computer moved into my mom his mom's house and when he did he took luna with him on his way out he also decided to completely trash our bedroom which more or less meant he trashed my room i didn't hear from him <clears throat> at all except for when he would text me to complain about how awful his mom's house is and she won't let him go anywhere and how he is miserable because she won't give him any vapes or weed cartridges what is this every time i ask about my cat he would just say that he had to take her because the ac wasn't working and it isn't like i kidnapped her the ac was only broken for a single night uh this is so fucking boring holy shit i started sleeping at home again but i didn't want to but i didn't see alex at all the first couple of days i spent trying to clean up my room crying okay 
So this sounds like they broke up for whatever reason, and it's a very immature breakup. I don't care. It's a breakup, and nobody got hurt, so I don't care. You know what I mean? Like, they broke up. I don't know the specifics. I don't know his story. I don't even care to hear his story. Uh, a lot of times, people will fucking exaggerate the breakups. I don't really know what to tell you. All right, so you guys broke up, and then you had to move out, and he didn't like you. Okay, he was the one that was making most of the money, it sounds like, and so then you were homeless in some capacity. I imagine she probably did do something that was kind of bad, unless Xander Hall is a completely unhinged person. But, uh, you know, of course... Uh, I imagine this guy, it doesn't really matter. Nuance probably doesn't matter to this guy because he's just looking for anything that's anti Xander Hall. So, okay, cool. This year, she describes how one day a few weeks before the time of the twit longer, he dumped her via text for apparently okay. lying, stealing, and cheating on him. Just but then afterwards, they were friends, which is weird to me that like he broke up with you via text, but you guys are still friendly because he's saying he would text me sometimes, tell me how much his mom's house sucked. So, why are you still having a dialogue with him if he's such an asshole? I don't understand. Like, what's the point? I mean, I know that he has a cat, but like you guys are having casual conversation with each other, it sounds like. Is already extremely shitty behavior. Lani says all of this is completely okay. untrue and has no idea where he got all this stuff from, but okay. thinks it might. Maybe he, maybe she's lying. I don't know. Maybe they're both lying. I don't know. <laughs> like they're both probably lying about different things in different capacities. Um, like, <laughs> why are you just taking her side, hundred percent? Maybe because a car was broken into one time, and all that the people who stole stuff left was his debit card, which she already had permission to use to buy groceries and stuff like okay, that. Lani whatever. also goes on to say that Xander Hall has refused to talk to him about any of this, and claims oh, that she care. was a master manipulator, okay. also implying that she sold all the stuff that was stolen from her car for drugs. He demanded okay. that she come home from work and pack all of her stuff, including her 13-year-old cat, into her Ford Focus and leave immediately, which is, of course, an absurd thing to ask someone on such short notice. Who cares, the cat? She had to move out and couch surf and sleep in her car for a few weeks before she could finally go oh, home. I know she realized her room had been trashed and Xander Hall had left with her cat to go and live. Well, no, he said that he left and then the room was trashed. He probably was just grabbing everything that was like his or something. Um, oh, I, oh, I have to avoid those. Oh, okay. Yeah, whatever. Back at his mom's house. So she moved back into their old apartment and was obviously trying to deal with this sudden shakeup in her life, her happiness, her security. When Xander okay. Man shows up without her cat and told her he was ending the tenancy on the apartment and she needed to move out. Oh, okay. So he moved back in with his mom and he was ending the rental agreement with the apartment. Of course. Why wouldn't you, why would he be paying for it for her? Uh he suddenly reappeared without Luna to pick up some stuff, uh more of his stuff. Tell me he was turning the keys to the apartment the next day, so I better be moved out by then. I don't make very much money. Rental prices are unbelievably high. Getting my own place right now is going to be extremely difficult. His mom started texting me, demanding I put all my stuff in storage. You know, and presumably start living out of the car. She told me I should just move to Big Bear, despite me not being able to afford rent there either. Not having a car, I could safely drive there in the winter and not having a job up there. I told him I would move out as soon as I could, but that it wasn't going to be possible tomorrow. Okay. I mean, like, yeah, one day notice isn't enough. I completely agree with that. But like, yeah, it sounds like he's the breadwinner. So her being homeless is really more that like he made the money and she didn't. And then they broke up. Uh. and be gone the next day. Lani, unfortunately, was arrested while she was trying to find somewhere to live, as unfortunately, she couldn't afford to pay the upkeep on the tags, which is vehicle registration for non-US okay. viewers, on her car, and one of her friends had drugs on him when the cops pulled them up, and she had to spend five days in a cell. When she Wow, what a surprise. So, the so not to be an asshole, but he... Oh, well, she's a drug addict. I don't want to be with her, but one one of her friends was had drugs on You, you think maybe because she was doing friends i'm not trying to say that she's a drug addict i'm just saying that usually drug addicts have friends that do drugs so your friend had drugs on them and then you got arrested which sounds like you maybe you had drugs on you too or maybe you were using in some capacity okay the story is interesting i can see why maybe he broke up with her um <clears throat> it's interesting how much defense you're running oh the friend just happened to have drugs on them you don't think that they were gonna fucking do the drugs like i, I what do you think drug addict, what do you think people do with drugs which is, oh, i'm just holding them it makes me feel warm makes me feel very warm and squishy inside she made a phone call, she found out that Xander Hall and his mum had completely blocked her or were ignoring her calls. Okay. And when she got out of prison and someone managed to take her home, she found out that the locks had been changed and she had no way to get into the apartment. Probably because she was living in an apartment that wasn't getting paid for. Yeah, that's kind of how these things work. I know that you're like all about like, hey, you know, like, I, I get it. Like, you want everybody to have a house. And sure, I do too. I mean, it'd be nice if we could fix some of that shit. But at the end of the day, um, like, she was in a house that she shouldn't have been in. So, you know. Fucking catch up. This meant that she was homeless and had none of her belongings. Wow. So let's recap real quick. Two and a half year relationship. The guy ends it out of nowhere via text, claiming that she's. That's what you're saying. Doing drugs and stealing from him. And then she got arrested for doing drugs. So yeah, that's kind of. <laughs> literally makes her homeless. And no. what does he have to say for himself? What is he supposed to do? Stay with somebody he's miserable with just so they wouldn't be homeless? You know, I've been there before. You know what I mean? Like, you know, that's fucking ridiculous. Why is the responsibility, why should the burden of responsibility be on him to do all of these things? I don't understand. He has to stay with this girl because she can't provide for herself. How the fuck is that his responsibility? That's fucking insane. Have you ever dated somebody before in your fucking life? What is wrong with these people? 
first things first. Debunking Danny. the alibi. Want- yeah, of course that would be if if he was if she was lying about the fucking presentation that she had of him. Why wouldn't he make an addressing the allegations video? Oh, after she's uh, you know said incorrect information. That's what his argument's going to be. Like he he ta- he spoke out against it. Well, okay. Wow, how terrible. No shit. That's what's going to happen. I want to say that making content about your breakup is an extremely ghoulish thing to do. Oh, this guy's such a loser. This guy's such a fucking loser. Holy shit. Bro, this guy is such a fucking loser. She's 10 years older than him? Holy fuck. That's an immature person. Bro, what a loser perspective. If you're a content creator and you just decide to make a video about like an ex, yeah, you're an asshole. But if some fucking asshole comes forward and goes, he was so bad to me, of course you have to respond to it, you fucking idiot. Like, what is he supposed to do? Just be like, I'm not going to talk about it? Like, of course he's going to talk about it. Oh, you shouldn't have made that content. Then she shouldn't have came forward talking about all this shit. What do you want me to tell you? Okay. I don't blame him at all. Holy fuck. This guy's a dishonest piece of shit. Oh, great. Ooh, okay, like making a tweet, going off on a Facebook post, or fuck that. Instagram. Why? Why? Why should you have to make a, a, a? Why should you have to make a fucking text post? Somebody's gonna fucking like lie on your fucking name, all right? Why do you have to? Oh well, you can only respond through text. Fuck that. If you, if somebody ever tries to play some fucking bullshit with me and try to push it out of context, I am making a fucking YouTube video. I am monetizing that video, and I'm gonna shit up and down you for fucking like trying to play this bullshit. We're like, oh, you're a bad person for this. Fuck off. You know what? Relationships can be really hard. No Nobody acts perfectly in relationships, right? My, like I would say, my fuck, like I've had exes that were pieces of shit. I've probably been pieces of shit to them in some capacity. It's kind of like the way the world works. Unfortunate, but like you're gonna make a video about it. I'm not just gonna make a fucking. Or you're gonna make a. You're gonna make a tweet about it. I'm not just gonna make a tweet. I'm gonna make a whole ass fucking video, and I'm gonna go into detail about how much of a scumbag you are. I'm not gonna play this game. Like, oh, we have to be nicer. Fuck that. Get the hell out of here. This guy's a fucking idiot. I'm story is kind of a normal human thing to do, but no. a 50 minute. You- it's not a normal thing, dude. It's do oh, when you're an online content creator and somebody makes a piece like that's basically can be considered like a fucking hit piece in some capacity. You don't get to just be like, oh, it's just normal, blah, blah, blah. That's childish. What are you talking about? Making posts about breakups, by the way, are fucking childish in general. I don't care who you are. It's still fucking childish. This guy's a fucking idiot. YouTube video. Not just a 50 minute YouTube YouTube video, a 50 minute YouTube video where he is trying to say that he made her homeless for a good reason and that she had tried- broke up with her, that's a good reason. ...to frame him and that he was trying to debunk some kind of conspiracy against him. Yes. This man Sounds about right. is insufferable. And maybe he's wrong about it. I don't know. But like, what, what does it mean? Like, yeah, if, if she's lying about him, of course he's going to do this. One thing I've learned from my time as a leftist and doing actual activism out in the real world is it does not matter how much of a piece of shit someone can be. They deserve, at the very least, the basic human rights that every human being deserves. What? Food, clothing, housing, healthcare. That's an institution problem. He doesn't have to provide those things for her because she can't provide for herself. The issue would be with the government and institutions not the individuals living in this entire situation by this logic if you are not going out and giving up any additional disposable income that you have and i guarantee you if you're a streamer you do because you have the money to have some fucking computer if you don't go and sell your computer right now and give that money to the homeless you are being irresponsible like this is the whole logic like where do we where do we draw the line why don't you sell all your shit get rid of your hair care products get rid of your computer get rid of your microphone sell all that shit give it to fucking homeless people because like you shouldn't be able like you have if you're responsible for everybody else that's not you outside of you and your fucking family and whatever okay so like live that stop fucking fucking virtue signaling oh my god it's so terrible they make their homeless but well, she didn't have a fucking job he was like why like you're what you're saying is that like anybody can date somebody else and if they engage in a relationship contract where one person has more money and the other person doesn't then like they're responsible forever if you get married and you have like alimony that's different like you're with somebody for like 40 years of your life i totally get that like hey we're gonna go into a relationship agreement for like 20 years we're gonna have kids we're gonna have this and i'm gonna stay home and take care of people and you're gonna go work okay that's one thing but you're just dating you haven't made that commitment at all okay he doesn't need to stay with her just because she's gonna be homeless that's her fucking problem all right he might have like stayed with her longer than he wanted to just because of that because she had another way to be self-sufficient but he he's not he shouldn't have to stress himself out mentally being with somebody he doesn't want to be with somebody he doesn't love just because just because they can't find their own shit they can't take care of their own shit all right that's a dumb fucking idea and that is such like a terminally online perspective to have you this you're you're an idiot 
Xander Hall reaching so far into the depths of his cruelty to render his partner homeless is just something that is you so are so to dumb. Me so many different angles. Shut up. You're it is a, genuinely hard for this me dude. To go this dude is a literally fucking a virgin, dude. I, I, or he's never been in a relationship before. How old? This person has to be like, like, how old is this guy? Like twenty three? Like how old are you for real? Because if you, if you're like, if you're like a fucking over the age of like twenty. If you're over the age of 18, you think this, you're an idiot. But if you're over the age of, like, 27, let's say, and you really think this, like, holy fuck. Like, you're just going to be... I, I don't understand. Like, how old are you that you actually have this perspective? This is such, like, an out-of-touch, like, childish perspective to have. Through this video, just seeing how smug and comfortable he is, all the while safe in the knowledge that he is going to be fine and his ex-partner is going through one of the worst times of her life. Oh, he starts off in this video by the saying- worst time of her life is not being with him, so I guess he's winning, huh? In the, early in the relationship, when he moved in with her, they had a trad con relationship. Now, for those of you that don't know what this is, this means that this is where the man does all the money making and the woman yeah. does all the chores around the house, the sure. cooking, the cleaning, something that's known as reproductive labor because it's normally women in society that have done this thanks to the patriarchy. This is just, just like a kind of gross dynamic where he has all the power to begin with. Why is it a gross dynamic? Okay, whatever. But I gotta say, you're at you're you're literally saying, you're implying that he should have to stay with her. So you're supporting the dynamic. You're saying he has to continue to support this girl, even if he doesn't love her. You're literally supporting the dynamic. You want you ideally would want them to go back to that dynamic. Additionally, she's working now, which means they're not in that dynamic. I don't know how you can like all these ideas clash. Oh, tra the traditional relations are really bad, but she he should have been forced to stay with her in that traditional Like, What are you talking about? If a couple can sense to this and it's something that they're both happy with, then that's absolutely fine. Like, if you have a trad con relationship like this oh and you're both safe in the knowledge that you are fine with it and you do not feel oppressed by this, cool, go for it, go for your life. Who am I to say what's right and wrong in a person's relationship? You're nobody. That works for you, cool. But it does not sound like Xander Hall had a very good knowledge of boundaries and consent Why? when it came to this kind of relationship. He says one of the first things that he noticed when he moved out is that he wasn't seeing as much money coming in as he thought he should be, which is like what? a very normal thing to happen when you first move out of your parents' gaff and go to live on your own somewhere, or okay. even with a couple. This is called the material conditions of the working class under capitalism, Xander Hall, and I advise you to do some research on it. Of course, it's an incredibly upsetting reality check that someone like Lani understood a lot more than Xander Hall because she has more life experience than him, being an older person than him. So then she should be good. But of course, when she explains that to him, that makes a lot of sense as to why she'd say that. But no, of course, Xanderhol is implying here that she is covering up for something, that this is all part of the conspiracy against him. Xanderhol then says that Lani was not giving him the emotional support that he needed, but from the account that okay. Lani gives about their relationship, it really doesn't seem like he was open in his communication about this stuff. It's actually... Okay, well, it's a good thing that you're listening to everything she says, and then you're ignoring everything he says, because that's usually how you're unbiased in this capacity. Really sad to read this, but... You're an observer on their relationship and basically their petty relationship wobbling. That's what it is. Okay. So like this whole thing, it's like, oh, well, from what she says, she was really great. Okay. I'm sure. She, of course she'd say that. Now she could be telling the truth. She could be lying. Probably. There's probably like both of them are probably telling the truth in some ways and lying in other ways. I don't know what to tell you, but like, what are you, you're just going to take her word for it just because it's anti Xander Hall. Here it is. I'll admit that since I started working outside the house, I haven't been as good of a girlfriend to Alex as I've been in the two years prior. During the two years of COVID, I was home all the time, constantly available and on call to help with anything he needed. I was mostly happy, but I told him many times about how I felt lonely a lot of the time. Alex is a lot better at talking about himself than he is at listening, and most days he would hardly come out of his room. When I started working again and I made some friends, I stopped being home as often, which made me happier but him miserable. I should have tried harder to find a healthy balance we could both feel good about, but I don't feel like I deserve to have my cat and everything I own taken from me. So okay. it kind of sounds like they came across a very normal problem that happens in relation it sounds like they didn't come across a normal problem what it sounds like is that covid was very disruptive to the dynamic and uh, that they weren't that did they start dating during covid um xander hall explains this they're worth thousands of dollars taken out of his account every month and the transactions were archived so it wouldn't show up in the general transaction feed oh wow really interesting also, if they started dating during COVID, that's not a traditional relationship situation. But okay. So apparently, uh, I mean, I'll take your word for it. Apparently, like, she was taking a bunch of money from him or possibly potentially taking a bunch of money from him. Okay. I mean, I would probably drug use. Yeah, sure. Um, relationships. That's basically down to toxic masculinity preventing men from asking for their needs directly. Nope. Oh, what is hey, somebody thinks that's like, I should have brought my, my, my Tommy bingo card. And of course, the second you say that, he starts talking about toxic masculinity. I get it. It's real. But I mean, like, Jesus Christ.
A little bit more sickening in this situation, though, is that he says the only reason that he moved in with Lani was to escape a living situation with his parents. My living situation with my parents eventually just got too toxic for me to continue being happy and making content, and I decided that my best course of action was to move away. And so I did. I moved all the way across the country to Palm Springs, California with Lani. Which is, and I will die on this hill, a fucking terrible reason to move in with someone. So, um, you said it was like sickening before. This is very normal for people to move in a little too quick to get out of like their parents' house. So it's not really sickening. It's actually somewhat normal. Not a good idea, but this idea, like I'm assuming you think it was like poorly intentioned, but most of the time it's like, oh, we like each other. We should move in. It's people who haven't really explored themselves. They don't really know what the fuck they're doing. Honestly, for her being the older person, should have been able to like realize that it was a bad idea from the start. If it's a bad idea for anybody, it's for her. She's got 10 years on him apparently. So like she doesn't really, you know, she should know that this is a bad fucking idea. Um, but okay. It's a great reason. He was 19 and he's just assuming that he was being like a bad person about it. This guy's a real piece of work, huh? About on your own, absolutely. But you should not be moving in with someone else just because of that. When that's you move in with someone that you- very, It's very unlikely that's the only reason is a young person. Well, she's 29 and he's 19. Are you serious? Holy fuck. You love that you're in a romantic or sexual relationship with. You do it because you love them. And wow, you it's so nice that you have. Oh, oh, you do it because you love them. I'm sure he loved her at the time, and I'm sure she loved him, and that they were not dating for very long, and they moved in too quick, like a lot of people do, and they fucked up, and they shouldn't have done it. But guess what? The 29 year old, supposedly, she's not 29, or if she's not that much older than you. You know, maybe you correct me if I'm wrong. But that's the person's probably more at fault. You should have more life experience, like this guy has said, to be able to go, mm, probably not a good idea for us to move in that quickly. But I guess she really wanted that trad life that much that she wanted to do that. Uh, and then he was like offering to support her for that. I don't really know. Half of them. They're 22 and 31. Okay, so they're okay. So there's like nine years old. Jesus Christ. Oh, but you know, and it holds a bad guy in every situation, so. And you decide to face this life together, not to escape another shitty living situation. Okay, which, thanks. Which, in man. all honesty, doesn't actually sound like that bad of a situation because his parents took him in straight away after yeah. things went wrong with Lani. He also goes on then to say that Lani needed right. attention, which is like, dude, do you know what relationship- Why don't you just go fuck Lani? Whatever your name is. I, I, I don't understand, like, what? Why are you sucking her off so hard? You don't even know, fucking know this person. You just hate him so much that you're gonna agree with everything that she's saying are in fact even five minutes ago you said that you needed attention from lani and that she wasn't giving it to you and apparently that's a valid thing for you to complain about but not for her he also does this bizarre mental backflip here saying that lani would want attention despite the fact that both of us were at home all day and we spent tons of time together just by virtue of that like no dude just because you're oh no he's not like it sounds like he may not be a hundred percent correct like i had said there's gonna be a mixture where both of them are right or wrong in different capacities okay Sure. Or in the same house as someone, or even in the same room, doesn't mean that you're doing bonding activities or paying attention to your partner. That is like the laziest relationship I've ever heard of in my entire life. And Let's from what Lani said in a tweet longer that we just read out, it kind of sounds like you were just in your room a lot of the time, just doing your own fucking I thing. Die. This next part is just absolutely batshit. Like, I've really got to hand it to Xander Holt of all the things that he does wrong that I've talked about in this video. Which is like nothing so far. This really takes the cake. While my suspicions became ever increasing, Lonnie was offered a job cleaning Airbnbs by a friend of hers. She took it, claiming she wanted to be able to get out of the house and make some friends and help make ends meet financially. Lonnie was now spending most of her time out of the house. In some cases, she would go more than a day without responding to me, and eventually- Oh, it's huge red flag. So she would just, like, that's one thing to get a job. Okay, so she's not just getting a job, according to him, unless this is emphatically incorrect. She's, like, out of the house for a day, I would, I would divorce my wife. I'm just letting you know right now. If you're out of the house, there's no way. There's just no way that there's not something going on, if that's true. It started not coming home. When I'd questioned her about it and she'd actually respond, her reasoning was that she was spending the night on her friend Sarah's couch because they worked together and they were carpooling to save money on gas. Okay. I didn't buy it. And the first... It might be true, I guess. All right. But, I mean, I don't know. That just sounds a little weird. ...night that she didn't come home, I started to consider the relationship over. Like, to huh? consider the relationship over the second that your partner does something that you don't like, and the first night that she didn't come home, I started to consider the relationship over. Like, to consider okay. the relationship over the second that your partner does something that you don't like is okay. so, so weak, dude. Well, good thing he broke up with her. <laughs> like, so that she doesn't have to, have to stay together. Okay. Like, you utter, utter waste, man. I couldn't think of a situation that is more childish, ridiculous, and self-serving than a man not even attempting to fix his relationship when his partner is trying to make herself happy on her own. Everything he talks about I next... Know, dude, I would be a pretty big red flag if, like, my fucking wife or my girlfriend just started 
staying outside the house for a day overnight for some weird reason of like we're just gonna carpool i mean i don't know that sounds a little suspicious to me he says that she wasn't answering his frankly ridiculous text demanding to know where she is he mentioned what are, dude this guy's never dated anybody before what did you just say, idiot? He talks about next where he says that she wasn't answering his frankly ridiculous text demanding to know where she is. What do you- Oh, demanding! What do you think a relationship is, you fucking idiot? If I text my wife and say, where are you? She's responding. If my wife texts me and says, where are you? I'm responding. This is called mutual respect. If you don't fucking respond to where you are, if you're busy, I get it. But if you're making like fucking habit and not telling me where you are, that's not- that's just not gonna happen. I wouldn't have married my wife. And same thing goes for me. Okay, we're on call for each other 24-7. You know exactly where I am. She knows where I am. That's how a relationship works. Like, what do you mean? What are you talking about? Like, you don't just... you don't, So she's sleeping over these people's houses and not responding to him? No, not happening. Not happening. He mentions that Lonnie shuts him down, saying that he's being controlling. And like, yeah, dude, that's because you were. That is not controlling whatsoever. Grow the fuck up. Asking your partner where they are when they stay out all night? Expecting to know where they are is not controlling. That is normal. You're an idiot. You have no idea what you're talking about. You're a child. I don't know how little fucking old you are, but holy shit, this is the most childish behavior I've ever heard in my entire life. That's not how relationships work. Any capacity. Being controlling. Demanding to know where your partner is all the time? That's extremely controlling behavior. Wanting to know where your partner is all the time? What? I just thought that's controlling behavior. No, it's not. That's normal person behavior. Get, get fucking married. You, there's nobody that's going to put up with that shit. And if they do, they don't love you. I don't know what to tell you. I'm fucking, like, I want to know where my wife is, all times. I don't give a shit. Fuck, I gotta get out of this thing. Again, why are you not doing any self-reflection here, dude? No, Being completely up. overbearing in how you smother a partner is absolutely absurd. And you really need to consider that all the people- <laughs> My wife's out for the entire night, where are you? Are you kidding me? What are you talking about? That's insane. You should be able to give, you should be able to tell your partner where you are. That's fucking unhinged. You're a weirdo need space throwing all your toys out with the pram and making her homeless because you simply homeless. cannot be bothered to try and make the relationship work is well i don't know sounds like she's doing some suspicious shit bro that's what it sounds like to me based on what's being said i don't doubt it oh man belongs in the bin he also complains that lani took the keys with her whoa wait a minute hold on relationship work is well the whole man belongs in the bin oh a garbage bin i thought he meant the loony bin he also complains that Lani took the keys with her every time that she went out, and that meant that he couldn't go out and do stuff. And it just makes me think, dude, are you an actual amoeba? Just get some more keys cut. Speak to the property manager. Like, what, what, what do you fucking want, dude? I think that in listening to all okay. this and understanding what's happened here, I've come to the conclusion that Xanderhal made a huge mistake that a lot of people do when they look for a relationship, and that is that he wasn't looking for a partner, he was looking for a mother. Dude, he was like 19 years old. Like, this whole idea that he doesn't get to experience a relationship like he it's called learning i don't know what you're talking about this guy's a weirdo i like how like this guy just uh, this guy just thinks that he knows what he's talking about he was probably looking for a mother or maybe he was first of all not for nothing but like most i would say most women are looking for somebody that was similar to their father and most men look for somebody that's similar to their mother not exactly but similar um why are you so obsessed with them staying together if they're like not happy with each other i don't really understand this is just like weird this is just an obsessive thing. Like, why are you going so... Like, bro, people who have, like, have been in real relationships know that, like, this is some shit I... I like, I wouldn't even touch this stuff. You don't know what the fuck's going on between their relationship dynamic. You don't know what she's saying that's right. You don't know what he's saying that's right. You don't know any of this stuff. And you're, like, weighing in as if, like, relationships are all so cut and dry. That's how I know you've never dated somebody in your entire life. Ever. You've, you're just you're just talking. You're just being, you're just being anti-fucking Xander Hall. I don't even know the guy. Holy shit. Yeah, if she was 18 to 19-year-old, maybe she was looking for a son. There you go. It kind of makes sense when Xanderhal talks about the stresses that he had living with his mum. I can actually relate to it a lot, and I did used to exhibit a lot of the same harmful behaviors wow. that he did. So it sounds like, like you're projecting. Like overbearing, needing to know where your partner is all the time, thinking that they're like lying and cheating on you and stuff like that. But my dude, bro, if somebody disappears for trauma. if somebody disappears for a day and won't tell you where they are, that is not a trauma response. It's a trauma response. Not everything is a trauma, okay? It's not a traumatic thing. A controlling partner can be traumatic. Most of the time, it's just annoying. Never everything's a traumatic experience. Not everything is like the worst thing in the entire world, okay? Like, Jesus Christ. It's a trauma response. No, it's not. He just, dude, go, leaving for 24 hours and not responding to your partner, that is an incredible red flag. That is a boundary. That is called establishing a boundary. Listen, if you're going to leave for a day, just tell me where you are. No, I'm not going to respond to you. Okay, well, now at this point, that's a, not respecting the boundary that he's trying to put up. Okay? Like, like, these relationships are about boundaries. I swear to God, if it was a guy, 
If it was a guy doing this shit, leaving the house for a day and not coming back, he would be like, yeah, see, he might be cheating. I guarantee you. It's a trauma response. Response. And to be fair to myself, I never fucking made anyone homeless. I never made a fucking 50 minute rant. That's because you don't have any money. The one <laughs> why doing that was a good thing to do. And this next bit just... Ew. What's it? She would constantly use my card to order Grubhub and Uber Eats to places she was cleaning for lunch instead of packing some of the fresh food that she had bought that was in our fridge. And I cannot wait to shit all over this guy. Going bad. She'd also constantly leave half-eaten food just sitting on the counter to go bad. She wouldn't even bother just throwing it in the fridge to let it be good for later. I can't. I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna. I'm gonna cut in front of here. We just established from this guy that Xander Hall said that they didn't have as much money as he thought that they were going to have. Now instead of bringing prepared food from home, that would have been less expensive she's constantly buying grubhub which is very expensive i had a similar problem when you're in financial strains where you're like ten thousand dollars in debt and your partner is refusing to cook food at home and constantly going out to eat and especially using grubhub services which are very expensive that is a huge issue and it shows that she doesn't respect him I don't know what you want me to tell you. He, she's not respecting him. Like, if you guys are in money issues, you have money issues, and then you're going to buy Grubhub every day, you're a problem. You are a fucking problem on a relationship. You are a financial burden. So this guy who pretends to be about the middle class, I'm guaranteeing you is about to say something along the lines of that, like, oh, he's being too controlling over her. Or is that a wrong accent? I don't know if that's the right accent. But, like, no, that's that's normal. It's very expensive. Let's see what you have to say, dumb fuck. Stand people who call themselves leftists and do not understand that people do not want to do reproductive labor. And there you go. He's a fucking moron. What are you talking about? What is re what is reproductive labor? Because she's a girl, she can't cook now? Now only guys can cook? Because you can't do reproductive labor? Only men can cook? Like, doesn't this seem fucking ass backwards? What are you talking about? It has nothing to do with her being a woman. It's because they don't have money. They've already said this. Are you a fucking idiot? What is happening here? You're, you're, you are, you, this is, you're an idiot. You are so fucking dumb. You're babying women. Oh, women don't want to have to. Why the fuck should he have to work then? Reproductive labor is when you're associating the typical labor that you do with your gender role. So Xander Hall doesn't have to work anymore because that's reproductive labor and men have historically worked. You see how fucking stupid this is? This is how fucking dumb you are. What are you talking about? Cook food to save money if you don't have money you need to cook your food it's less expensive she's burning a fucking hole in his pocket and he's trying to set a boundary but you don't like it that this man is setting a boundary because you're so fucking dude what where have you left the house before in your entire life this is insane she's burning money and you're just like <clears throat> reproductive shut up Shut the fuck up. You were just going off about how you don't like traditional relationships which are women staying home like I don't I don't get it I don't I just don't get it Make your food. Why, should, why, why do we have to reverse the roles? Both of them should be cooking and cleaning by your logic and working. If he said she should have to always make me my food and I should, that's one thing. That's not what was said. This is ridiculous. This is insane. This is insane. Holy fuck. This, is, this guy's a fucking idiot. Like, cooking is a whole ass thing, dude. Lots of people get Uber Eats. I'm going to be getting an Uber Eats after I've recorded this video. If you have money... To, uh, dude, I don't even know how the fuck you have money to get Uber Eats. That shit's so fucking expensive. You're, what, do you, what do you do for a living? Like, you're, you're trying to be a streamer online, which means you probably don't have, like, an amazing job. But you still are getting Uber Eats. It probably means that you're living in a very... In a, in a space that is very... What, are you still living with your mom? Where do you get the fucking money for this shit? I don't understand. I don't get Uber Eats at all. That's just fucking expensive, like 10 bucks on an order. Are you kidding me? That's fucking insane. I'm going to get Uber Eats. Why? What if a woman made that food, though? Wouldn't that be forcing her to do reproductive labor? What, so isn't it sexist that you get Uber Eats and on the off chance a, guy, like a girl made it? I don't understand. I'm confused. Because I've got no energy to cook. And Barry Yes, you do. You're a fucking streamer. Go cook, asshole. What do you fucking mean you have no energy to cook? My wife works 40 hours a week and come homes and comes home and cooks. Okay? I've started cooking too to help her out. But like listen, like what you are, I don't have the energy. I, I'm uh, doing this. I wrote this. I wrote uh, 1500 words for this video. I wrote an essay for this. I have no energy left to cook. What are you talking about? What are you talking about? You don't have energy left to cook? What do you oh, I don't have the energy. I got to order it on Gr on Grubhub. Dude, if you don't have the... Dude, I used to work like 60, 70 hours a week. And I had the energy... I mean, like... 
Like, this is a real world. Have you ever worked like a real job for an extended period of time? Like, does this guy even know what it's like to be financially hardship? I fucking hate like leftist pieces of shit like this. People who are like, I'm all for the working class. Motherfucker, do you know what it's like to have to work like two jobs? Like, do you know what it's like to like really have and like and like if you don't work those two jobs, like you you get ruined financially. Not just, oh, I have to work like actually having to work like two fucking jobs. Like, you know how hard this shit is? I don't understand. Now it's I'm great, easy as fuck. I'm I do I'm a streamer. But like, what are you talking about? This is insane. This is just unhinged behavior. You have enough time to make a YouTube channel that's not making you money, but you don't have enough time to cook food to save money. It doesn't make any sense. Then your your priorities are incorrect on what you're doing. Get the fuck out of here. In mind, Lani, again, as he admits, was the entire trad wife ideal. So she was doing all the reproductive labor. She was going out doing a job. Who says that? Why do you think that? Why? Now that she's working a job, how do you know that they didn't change their shit? How do you know that they didn't change their like relationship contract now? What are you talking about? He said cook for her and not cook for him. If he was demanding she that he that he she cooks for him, then that would have been like a different situation. And she was trying to socialize. He complains wow. that all the food in the fridge would go bad. And I'm not being funny, man, but like, Sandahol, have you never been in control of a fridge in your entire life? It happens all the time. Because again. unfortunately, capitalism doesn't allow us a lot of time to actually address things like that. Plus, if you've got ADHD like me, planning and cooking. Yep, he's a victim. I have ADHD. I can't plan or cook. Uh, I can't do anything for myself because I have ADHD. Shut the fuck up. What a pussy. Shut the fuck up. I have ADHD, so I can't plan to make my... Shut up. Shut the fuck up. I have ADHD too. Shut the fuck up. Shut up. That's an excuse. It's not impossible to focus with ADHD. It's so difficult. The fact that oh, I have ADHD, I can't do this. You're just, like you, you're you're just pretend. You're a fucking victim. You want to. You're happy. You're the person that's like desperately happy that you have ADHD. You're like yes, I have an excuse to not make my own food and order Grubhub. That's some fucking childish ass shit. What are you talking about? It is such a drama. When I'm hearing this, I can't help but go back to this clip that I played you earlier. And go buy a rotisserie chicken. Put it in your freezer and just pick off of it. There you go. They're cheap. Go to fucking uh. Go to Costco. There you go. Here you go. There you, you prepped your food. Okay. And Lonnie says, like this is a thing that happens regularly, and this poor woman has to deal with this literal oh baby God. man popping whiteies on stream because he smoked too much weed and he just can't make it to the bathroom. So Bro, dude, she, just she's like, I don't understand. So why would she want? She, isn't it? You're, this is the guy that you're saying that should be forced to stay with this girl. By the way, he's so bad for her, but they should be forced to stay together. This is what you're saying right now. I just want you to understand that. Okay. So Xander Hall is then talking about how he blocked off all of his PayPal accounts, all the access he knew that Lani had to his money, and then goes on to show a bunch of cash app transactions made to her account. But okay. hang on a minute. If he just like on a whim decided to like stop her from getting money, which was her only access to money, by the way, especially considering he was working a job, was she not? Wasn't she doing, wasn't she, wasn't she cleaning Airbnbs? That he thinks that she was lying about the job that she had. And of course, remember chat, her having access to his money was an agreement that they previously had in the relationship. And now they're breaking the agreement. So just so you know, consent doesn't work. So consent isn't per, uh, permanent. I want you to know the idea. This is this is the funniest thing because we're we're gonna talk about a little bit of consent now. So what he's saying is they have to maintain this relationship because they consented to it once. That's like if I said to a to let's say uh, I was gonna say my wife, but I said we're having anal tonight. Now like that's it. We're always having anal, and she can't retract that because this is just how it is. This is our contract. You have to have. Or if I said you have to have sex with me on Wednesdays at five o'clock at night. If I said that's my wife and she missed the day. By this guy's logic, it's my wife's a bad person. But that's not how these types of things work. You can break up with somebody, and you don't. You're not ever permanently forced to be in a relationship or a, a sexual interaction with somebody. What are you talking about? This is stupid. Whether it was unspoken or not, oh what did Xanderhal expect Lani to do when he stopped her from having any access to money whatsoever? No. What do you mean? Then she wouldn't be able to cook. She'd have to. She'd have to cook her own food. No. I don't understand. There was no chance for Lani to plead her case. No chance for her to Who talk cares? out with him. No, Who cares? Xander Hall exacted the same state violence that any sheriff or landlord would do on someone who has not been paying their bills on. State violence? What are you, what are you saying? What words are you saying right now? State violence? He didn't want to stay with a girl. You're making this out to seem like a huge deal. He, he just didn't want to be with that girl. And you're trying to make it seem like some kind of fucking violence. He's a Nazi. It appears that the same day he did all this and stopped her from having access to money was also the same day that he kicked her out of the apartment. He didn't confront her with the information that he now had. No. 
Who cares? Nor did he give her any kind of grace period to find somewhere else to live. He just acted like the most disgusting, entitled, okay. wannabe land baron that you could possibly conceive. Sure. Also, this part in the video where he scrolls through the transactions of varying amounts that absolutely can be explained away mostly by the fact that, as he admits earlier in the video, he was the sole breadwinner and gave her free reign of his debit card with this absurd epic music. So it's his fault that she, like, abused his, like, she potentially, like, misused his credit card or a debit card because he gave access to it. So naturally, he should have just expected her to use, like, shit. Is that your argument? Like, like you just solved the mystery of the century as well. It's gross. There's no other way to put it. It's sick. Yeah. He's a sick misogynist that treats women like shit on and offline. Now, I just want to stress wow, that while this is a really right difficult though. part of the video to go through, I did want to add a little bit of... I can, I can imagine it's not that difficult to go through because you are not doing anything. You're not doing any detailed, like, uh, you're not doing a detailed breakdown of it at all. So this has to be super easy for you to go through, no? relief in here for people because what kind of a content creator would i be without anything like that so um here you go i didn't hear from him at all except when he would text me to complain about how awful his mom's house is and how she won't let him go anywhere that implies that they're both like on like some kind of a friendship level this is very normal for relationships after they end especially like a first relationship to still kind of like be in interaction have interactions with your ex because like you're still like either you're still in love with them and you're still young and like it all seems very confusing and weird like that's very normal uh, but okay. Yeah. And how he's miserable because she won't get him any vapes or weed cartridges. He would only text her about that shit. He is an actual winner. And to be honest, that is on. Why is she responding to the text then? Like, why doesn't she just block him or something? They're they're both talking to each other. You're taking everything she says as fucking gospel when they get to realize that they're both probably lying about different things in different ways. Brand, considering a lot of the stuff that we've already gone through. Anyway, let's dive back into this cesspit. When Zan talked about Emily, the friend that Lani had who fell out with her and apparently exposed her gambling and meth problem, I'm skeptical at best. This is a man who's shown his ass regarding how- You're skeptical at best. You should be skeptical. He might be lying in some capacity, but you're sucking her off, so- it Oh, she, uh, she's really good at guessing, I assume. Oh my god, making you feel crazy for being suspicious. Don't even get me started on that. The bitch is the most manipulative person ever. Here's the thing about Lonnie, though. She doesn't know how to accept when she's wrong about something. She hates admitting this wrong, blah, 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 blah. Okay, I'm assuming that's him and his ex talking together and like blah, blah, blah. Well, people talk shit about their fucking friends all the time. It's probably not supposed to be that serious, but, you know, it's like I said, this is going to be a whole fucking mess. He makes things up about women who he doesn't like so often that you'd have to forgive me that I'm when? doubtful, even in the existence of this person. When does he do that? But let's you, do a debate. You haven't showed us like a single instance of him just making up lies about women. Like your friend that you were talking about before, like it was totally saying horrible shit. So what are you talking about? Hey, bro, classic and play devil's advocate. I'm sure all of them are here. Um, One hour and seven minutes. Into the video. Okay. Yep, they're all going to love this shit. Let's say that this Emily person does exist. And that Xanderhal's right about how Lani stole money off him and that she's got a gambling problem and she's addicted to meth. Then it's his. Now, are you going to say that's his responsibility to make it better or something? So, you see what these leftists what? in Xanderhal's community who have, for example. Wait, sorry, what? So? Emily person does exist. And then Xanderhal's right about how Lani stole money off him and that she's got a gambling problem and she's addicted to meth. So? What do you mean, so? I just want you to. Okay. Okay, what are we going to say? You see what here? these leftists in Xanderhal's community who have, for example, demanded Lani do drug tests, harassed her, accused her of grooming him, even though the power balance is in Xanderhal's favor in every single instance of the relationship. Well, she's... Wait, what? Are we talking about the ten, person that's 10 years older? First of all, I don't think that he... She grew, I mean, I don't know the specifics. I don't know why he would be talking about grooming. But if she's 10 years older, then she has a significant power balance over it. Like, okay. Oh, you're so dumb. You're not realize that, like... You even you even said she was more mature before. And that is a power... There's a power balance there. And more an older, more mature person... Yes, it's a power... Okay, whatever. Yeah, ...and made her online life a living hell after this video is publishing. Don't understand. And again... Well, he didn't really do anything. She made an accusation and then he responded to it. So, of course, that's what he's going to do. If you did it unprompted, I would be more on your page. But. This is the fault of Xanderhal and other debate nerds. Is the punitive justice, especially financial violence, a.k.a. making someone homeless, is not justice. You don't just... Oh, you're an idiot. So, I want you to understand something. This is, this is a fact of the matter. I think people... You know, like people that are addicts should definitely get help, whether it's gambling or meth. But people that are drug addicts or addicts to things, they're not pleasant people to be around. That's just the reality. They are very self-absorbed. They lie a lot. Uh, it's not easy to be around people like that. That's just a fact of the matter. If you've ever interacted with somebody that's like a drug addict or something in some capacity, it's not like a pleasant situation. It's not fun to be in. It's not fucking amazing and based. It's not good at all. And like, so you're telling him that he should have to engage in like, basically like very, something that's probably very like emotionally oppressive in some capacity because capitalism, that's your whole argument because capitalism is an issue. That means that he's responsible to for, he should be forcibly with her. Like, okay. I mean, I just disagree. 
become a cop when someone has issues like that. You're no better than any fucking cop in the police forces of America or now. the justice system. Holy fucking shit. Touch grass. The lot of you. I swear okay. to God. Apparently this Emily also accuses Lani of getting her ex-boyfriend evicted by not paying the rent on time. This man calls himself a leftist. A leftist. Where As someone in a tenants union, I cannot stress enough. The only people who evict anybody in this world are either landlords and slash or the cops. The idea that this man thinks that it's a tenant's fault when they get evicted fucking boils my blood. How the hell can you call yourself any kind of leftist when you've got an opinion like that? I'd love to hear what Bernie, who apparently Zan really hoped would win in the DNC nominations, would have to say about that. Also, Zan then going on to say that when Lani said she got evicted because her ex was hitting her and abusing her and they were being so loud and they had fights that they got too many noise complaints, he of course says, well, uh, Emily said she made it up, so obviously she did. You fucking piece of sh I mean, you're just being a contrarian to Xander Hall, so like, you know, maybe she did make it up, maybe she didn't, I don't know. Uh, is that her friend that said that she made it? I don't know. Why are you so invested in his personal relationship? The fact that this even last like third exists is really weird and petty. And again, shows that you've never been in like an actual mature relationship uh, or you've ever broken up with somebody. If you don't understand, like people will sometimes lie about different aspects of their relationship or like their the potential of manipulative people. If he was actually dating a drug addict, 100% on brand for her to be like somebody who lies about shit. That's just a reality. That's like, it's unfortunate, but like people who are fucking addicted to shit, they're, they're just, it's not easy to be around them. It's not easy. Like, I don't want to tell you, they lie all the time shit. He goes on a lengthy diatribe now about credit scores and his hopes and dreams of being able to move to Seattle. And honestly, okay. I just kind of fucking tuned out at this point. It was like 3 a.m. when I was doing this bit in the script. And after everything that he has done to his ex, I okay. honestly do not care, dude. Like, this guy is so focused on, like, not getting an eviction because it would harm his credit score. I'm just like, bro, you made someone homeless. You made okay. someone homeless and removed access to their money so that they got arrested because they couldn't afford access to his money. His money, not her money. The upkeep on their registration, and now they have a criminal record. What the fuck do you think that does to someone's credit score? What do you think that that does to someone's life? Anyway, next, Xander Hall just like admits that Lani told him that she has nowhere to go, and he's just like, I don't care. And then he says this. She needed to move her stuff out. Yeah, why should he care? I'm not trying to be an asshole, but I've had like exes like threaten suicide before. Uh, when they, if we broke up, and then guess what? They never killed themselves. Like people saying, I don't have this, it could be a manipulation tactic. Like, so what? Like, that's not his problem anymore. They broke up. It's the world. I don't wish homelessness on anyone, but it just had to happen. 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 He doesn't care if she's homeless. He just doesn't want to be attached to her. She, he sounds like what he's saying is like, yeah, I wish she had like a nice place to live, but I just can't stay with her just so that she's okay because I'm not okay in the relationship. What, all for your fucking credit scores, Anne? All because you didn't have the guts to sort out your relationship? Weak, dude. What? Fucking weak. One of the weirdest things to me that doesn't... Why, why does he have to stay with her? Like, what, what world do you live in where you have to stay with the first person you've ever been with? Like, this is so weird. Really add up is that Xanderhol claims that there were eviction notices served to the property that apparently Lani had hid. Like, what would that have achieved? And also, why would she not have mentioned in a twit longer that she would have been worried about getting evicted from the apartment by landlords? When it came down to it, she was evicted eventually anyway. Now, in a twit longer, she claims yeah. that Alex and his mom changed the locks of the... So why aren't you yelling at the people that actually evicted her? Why are you yelling at Xander Hall? He didn't actually evict her. We were, you're aware of this, right? You were just saying it property managers or whatever, the only ones that actually, actually evict people. So you're admitting that you understand that he didn't actually evict her at all. Why are you so angry at him? Why not at her or at the property people? The apartment so that she couldn't get in when she got out of jail. But honestly, knowing landlords as well as I know them now with the work I've done for the tenants union, it's possible that a landlord would have just done that. Possibly because Xander Holt ended the tenancy and kind of like forced all of her stuff to get locked up. But anyway, it's by the by. And to be honest, I guess it's possible, but I don't know why she'd lie about this. And she doesn't exactly try and vilify Xander Hall in this twit longer. In fact, at the end of it, she actually pleads with him to get in contact with her to sort all this mess out. She even well, no, she's just kind of like uh, talking about her cat. That's not really, you know, but okay. Um, even says at one point, to be clear, I'm not saying all or even most of this is Alex's fault. He isn't required to help me, but it feels like he is trying to make the hole I'm in impossible to dig my way out of. Also, well, I mean, it's not her responsibility. Again, you're trying to vilify this guy for, for not helping her. That's what your whole thing is. So what's he playing at when he shows this Instagram exchange? Does he think this makes him look like a good person? Of course, his fans don't care. They're going to support him. Anyway. What does it say? Let me just read it myself. Uh, so you will not be following the order to vacate the apartment left on the door. Just call blah. And he said that he never messaged you. So I'm actually just confused at this point. Can you please screenshot it? Send it to me so you can try to figure it out. What's going on? Can you please call me just for a minute? I'm not trying to manipulate you. I swear. I'm just really fucking lonely and I miss Luna and I'm scared and alone. And, uh, I just want to hear your voice for a minute, please. Please, Alex, at least say no. Fuck. I'm sorry. I'm just lonely. Uh, you're anyway, but that he says something at the bottom. You're blocked or something. Um, anyone on the outside looking in is gonna this makes him look like a good person of course it's 
Oh, you blocked Paleo. Oh, okay. He blocked her. Yeah, she does sound like she's been kind of manipulative there, but okay. I mean, maybe she's not. Fans don't care. They're going to support him anyway, but damn, anyone on the outside looking in is going to see this and be like, yikes. No, Santa Hall shares really. some more DMs with people who were like legit concerned about Lonnie's whereabouts. He underlines this one where a third party who would be unbiased says that she was smoking DMT in the car with someone. Zan underlines this and writes doubt here. Um, yeah, it's awful. She's just like, we're hanging out with a creepy cold dude who comes to my shows and just sits in the car smoking DMT most of the time. Hardly even hangs out with us. So what did he saying? Doubt is that they're just doing EMT or DMT or whatever? Implying okay. that he thinks that she was smoking meth. Again. Like well, I figured having sex, but maybe if she's a drug addict. Let me point this out to everybody. If somebody is addicted to meth, especially if it's someone that you love, that still doesn't make everything that he's doing to her okay. He correctly points out in the video that. Uh, you should not have to be with anybody who's a drug addict. I feel for people who are drug addicts. I'm, never, I'm not going to date. Like, why would you want to date a drug addict? It's very difficult to be with them again. Like, that's a system issue. It's not an individual issue. I don't know what he's talking about. Like, I worked with a guy who was, like, was, like, really on drugs. He was still on drugs. And he was, like, he was not great, man. He was rough to fucking work with. He would lie a lot. He was lazy. He'd fall asleep. I think he was a coke addict. Fuck, I'm going to lose again. I'm getting so pissed. Um, it was so annoying. But meth and DMT need a pipe to be smoked in, a crack pipe in particular. And yeah, that's correct. But if you've ever actually been outside in your actual life, you would know that someone on crystal meth behaves extremely differently to someone who is on DMT. So I actually entirely believe that she was smoking okay. DMT and not meth, to be honest. But you don't even know how she was interacting in the first place. You've never even seen her face, I don't think, before. What do you mean? How do you know how she was acting? What are you talking about? You're you're talking about like limited instances of what she's talk like. I, what do you mean? Okay. Not that it matters, right? Also, clearly in reference to Alex telling her he's spoken to friends who've been worried about her whereabouts. She says in the screenshot, "I spoke to blank, and they said you never spoke to them." I'm so I'm actually just confused. Yeah, it seems like. It, it, well, she was saying that before about the apartment thing. So either she's lying or he's lying. I don't really care to be honest with you. It's their relationship, but we're going through it. But if she was lying about the one thing, maybe she, maybe he's lying, uh, or if she's lying about never seeing like an eviction notice or whatever, um, then she could be lying about this. Maybe I don't know. Which is clearly, at the very least, an indicator that Xander Hall is not telling the full truth with these screenshots. If you fully believe him, sure, but like only a fucking idiot would only fully believe one person. Both probably in the wrong in some capacity. Santa Hall then admits that he was considering going back to the apartment with the police. Okay. A leftist who's done content covering police brutality. He was going to bring the cops to his ex-girlfriend's place, probably telling them that she'd stolen from him, is addicted to crystal meth, and might be fucking crazy and unhinged. This motherfucker could have got her killed. Haha, <laughs> <laughs> you're a loser! Holy fuck, you think the cops are going to- What? What do you- th Dude, you're a moron. You like, holy fuck. Yeah, there are cops who do bad things, but you think the cops are going to kill her because he went there with the cops to evict. You're insane. You're an idiot. Bro, this only works on other dumb fuck leftists. You can only say some stupid shit like this to some fucking dumb asshole leftist. Of course, you fucking, you're an idiot. You think that he actually believes this? That would be the scariest part, is if he really believes that. That would be the most scary part. Also in this next bit, Xander Hall just straight up accuses Lani of setting up a credit card in his name, which is extremely fucking hard to do when you don't have a fixed address. Like, where is she picking up this credit card from, dude? Is she picking this up from, like, the car park where she's sleeping in her car? One of the first things that he says in this video is that he noticed that money was getting drained out of his PayPal account to an unknown source, and that he didn't believe Lani when she said that he might have got hacked. But I've had my PayPal hacked before. A literal Russian child hacked my fucking PayPal in 2014 because I didn't know what I was doing. The little shit used it to pay for gaming subscriptions. It was extremely funny. And in fact, when I contacted PayPal, they sorted it all out immediately it was pretty fucking good to be honest but what i'm trying to point out with this anecdote is that actually it's entirely possible that someone could have stolen xander hall's identity and taken out a credit card in his name not maybe also probably more likely that it would be somebody you know i mean it's a, it's all possible but okay um just lani next people were telling me that she that he would she archived the posts or if that was her um and that so that he wouldn't be able to see it. I don't really know what that means, but okay. There's more unfounded accusations that she was done by the cops for meth. And I gotta say, sharing someone's police report, even though it is public information, as he rightly points out in the video, it's just a weird fucking thing to do. It's really? like being like here. Wait, hold on. So founded accusations that she was the Hall's identity and taking out a credit card in his name, not just Lani. Next is more unfounded accusations that she was done by the cops for meth. So she has a police report. Or she get arrested for doing meth. So this says substances and paraphernalia and substances. So two substances, two paraphernalia charges, and looks like there might be more information. Okay. Yeah, it sounds like she was doing meth. 
She got arrested for the substance and like the thing you smoke it in? Okay, maybe she was. Uh, okay. And I gotta say, sharing someone's police report, even though it is public information, as he rightly points out in the video, it's just a weird fucking thing to do. I mean, if she got arrested for using methamphetamine, um, maybe she's a meth user. <laughs> I don't know. It sounds like his story gets more and more credible by the fucking hour here. It's like being like, here, here is the official thing that says that my ex is a bad person. Anyway, he says that in the police report. No, it just says that they did drugs before. Um, which, you know, corroborates, right, his story that uh, she was a drug addict. That she was definitely done for methamphetamine. Now, look at these police reports. It doesn't say anywhere here that she was done for meth. It says... It says substance, so it could be a different substance, I suppose. You think it's weed? Maybe. I don't know. I, it sounds like, I mean, that'd be very weird. But, uh, okay. She was done for being in possession of a controlled substance. You do yeah. know what a controlled substance is. Don't use Anderhal. Yeah, many, 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 many things. But no. Yeah, maybe she's on mushrooms. I don't know. I mean, okay. His story seems pretty solid at this point so far. Oh, fuck. Zan the man needs you to think that it is meth. You know, the bad drug that all the crazy, unhinged druggies do. All the crazy, unhinged druggies that steal oh. things and hurt people and rob people and rape people. Just so they could get their fix. And making out that Lani is a person like that would fit his narrative. Sure. Pretty conveniently. Or it's possible that it is the narrative and that you're just trying to dismiss that with a bunch of conspiracy theories because you don't like him. Wouldn't you say? Xanderhal then tells us that he went back to the apartment while she was in jail, and is delighted to tell us that it looked like the aftermath of a frat house party. I'm pretty fucking sure that Xanderhal didn't go to college, what? so I don't know how he knows what an actual frat house- I mean, I'm pretty sure you've never dated anyone before, so I don't really know how they, you're talking about, you know, anything dating related. Party is, but anyway, that's by the by. And to be honest, if I'd have gone through the shit that Lani had gone through, I would not have an incentive to clean up that house. I would be fucking devastated. I'd probably spend a lot of time just like in bed. Hell, I find mm. it hard enough to clean my house in general with fucking ADHD and trust. Dude, I hate this person. Shut the fuck up, you stupid fuck. Well, ADHD, you find it really hard to do things. <laughs> Bro, this guy is talking about how horrible his ADHD is, and it makes it so difficult for him to function. Yet he was managed to write a fifteen hundred word fucking or fifteen thousand or fifteen hundred word whatever fucking YouTube essay, and then made the video. He has too much ADHD to clean the house, but when it comes to making a video essay, no problem whatsoever. ADHD is just your excuse for fucking doing things or not doing the things that you need to do. I have ADHD too. I used to be medicated. You don't see me going around going, guys, I can't. Uh. If I ever told my wife that I didn't clean the house today because I have ADHD, she would smack me, rightfully. That's dumb. What a childish thing to say. Listen, everybody has problems, and you have to get over it. You have to move through your problems. Some people can do it at easier than others. You probably don't have ADHD that really impacts your life in a meaningful way. Me, pretty much the same thing. Not anymore. You learn to deal with it, and you learn to control it. You're belittling people who actually have ADHD that actually makes it difficult for them to function in some capacity. You're just using it as an excuse. So shut the fuck up. Trust me, having ADHD and OCD is a fucking trip. Yes, it's very annoying. It's very it's very frustrating to have ADHD. I know this because I have those. It's very annoying. I get it. Shut the fuck up, okay? Shut your goddamn mouth, okay? Who can't? Like, stop. You're using it as an excuse. Knock it off. So next he says that he found, like, some beakers and jars that were in shrink wrap. Kind of implying that he thinks that she was going to be synthesizing drugs in the apartment. But Maybe probably was. what was more likely is that she was going to use it for like Etsy store stuff that I think she was doing on the side. Because it kind of looks like Maybe, she was doing that stuff know. anyway, according to this Twitter post. But honestly, at this point, it really does sound like he's trying to LARP his own Breaking Bad made up fantasy. He even sure. references the show when he's talking about this. And what I want to point out, by the way, is that Xander Hall and his community seem like obsessed with evidence. Even if it is like questionable at best. So... Oh my god, imagine being obsessed with evidence. So why do we not have a picture, Xanderhal? Where are the pictures of this supposed meth lab that Lani was making in your fucking- Well, didn't you just show the beaker? I mean, he didn't show a whole lab, he just, okay. It's apartment. Like, if this happened to me and I went to an old apartment and found some stuff that I didn't recognize in there and I was worried that it was like weird, I would probably take a picture of it so I could ask people and be like, yo, uh, what the fuck is this? <laughs> I mean, you would probably just downplay it in some capacity. Like, you've been doing every single time she doesn't act, like, responsibly. So... He then next talks about how he starts removing all of his possessions. Clearly trying to make a statement here that even though they had the agreement that Lani was able to spend his money on the things that she needed, that now all of these things are his, actually. Oh, no. Oh, you thought that actually I was being nice and these things belong to you. No, they're mine. They're fucking mine. And the I think his argument is, is that she was supposedly stealing money, so he's going to take whatever he can take uh, to make up for that. That's just the... That's just what I'm extrapolating from this. way he then talks about how he just went back to his normal life, pretending that none of this stuff happened, is just so disgusting. Where is his empathy? My what? God, no debrief, no makeup set. Uh, if you're with somebody that you do... 
No makeup set? What are you, child? Just sweep it all under the carpet. Don't even think about your poor, homeless ex girlfriend Wait, why did you boil- Dude. Sex. So oh, disgusting. Where is his empathy? My god, no debrief, no makeup sex. No makeup? Dude, this guy has a very childish perspective of relationships. Okay. Just sweep it all under the carpet. Don't even think about your poor, homeless ex-girlfriend who has no fucking money, has gone to no jail, problem. and whose life is falling apart. Just go and fucking make your YouTube videos. No. Complete refusal to take responsibility of his actions. He tries to cover his track- What is he responsible for? Say it by saying that if she really wanted to, Lani could get in touch with my mum. But even if that's the case, it is so irresponsible to cut off all communication with someone that you had been seeing for two years to not even allow her to make her case. Honestly, no, fuck that. I've been in a relationship. I've been in like really toxic relationships, and I just cut it off once you're done. I just you cut it off. You boil a relationship down to like sex, which is really childish and weird. But yeah, no. Sometimes you just need to be done, especially if it's a toxic person. The gang, I can't get over this. Like, I've had toxic relationships that were six months long where someone had been confirmed by multiple people to have been cheating on me, and I still didn't act like this. I wow, then you're a fucking pussy. I still tried to sort things out with this person. Well, then you have no respect for yourself, so that's your fucking issue. Okay, <laughs> I stayed with a person who cheated on me. Okay, get some self respect then. I don't know what to tell you. I gave them way more grace than this fucking man could even conceive. That's, you're a loser. Sorry. This next bit, I'm just going to let him speak for himself, really. Wow, for the first time, you're going to put him on, huh? I have no intent to keep on paying to keep her items in storage. It's burning a hole in my pocket for me to even hold on to these things. Okay, I only saved fair. them out of the kindness of my heart to try and be a good person, and it's oh. only gotten me tangled up in more drama. I would literally have less bullshit to deal with had I let her sentimental, irreplaceable items get trashed in the unit along with the rest of her stuff. No comment. What did he do wrong? I don't understand. And it's only gotten me tangled up in more drama. I'd literally have less bullshit to deal with had I let her sentimental, irreplaceable items get trashed in the unit along with the rest of her stuff. Yeah, it sounds like what he's saying is I shouldn't have been nice because now it's like elongating the interaction I'm having with her. Okay. No comment. Well, Lots of notes. But you shouldn't have a comment because you don't know what you're talking about. Anyway, but no comment. I don't really think I need to cover any more of this video than what I've already mentioned, so I'll just leave you with this part. Zan references the twit longer that Lani made and says that he's proud of his fans for already being skeptical before he'd had the chance to make this video. With that in mind, it's time to wrap this up. Thank, thank God. Jesus fucking Christ, thank God. The long and short of this stuff is that Xander Hall has fostered a community of liberal toxic masculinity. No one here is listening to the victim. No, no one at all okay. actually even understands that Lani is a victim. Well, maybe it's because she's not a victim. Maybe it's a breakup and you're just fucking virtue signaling, pretending to care about victims. Nor do they understand that Sophie or Kara or the woke scolds that he talked about are also victims. They actually believe that Xanderhal is the victim in all of these situations, despite okay. him having all the power in the situation with Lani and his fans being predispositioned to support him in the case of Sophie, Kara and the quote unquote woke scolds. In the situation with Lani, he is your traditionally toxically masculine head of the household manly man. His community clearly have a sheer lack of understanding of material conditions, human rights, drug use, state violence and financial violence. Not to mention homelessness, which is a clear indication that he doesn't educate his community on those things. And the fact that he called his video on his breakup, debunking the allegations against me, sort of implies that there's a conspiracy against him. This is a narrative that he falls back on a lot in his attack hit pieces on people like Sophie and Kira. I imagine he thinks this conspiracy exists because of all the other people on the online left who dislike him for fairly credible reasons. All the things I've mentioned in this video, plus a lot of other stuff that I simply can't mention because otherwise this video would be hours long. There are so many other people that I've not mentioned that Xander Hollis hurt with his ridiculous character character assassinations and the harassment of his fans. I think we've covered a lot of facts in this video that point to our man Zan not having really recovered from his alt-right days. His misogyny is still there and he needs to do a lot of work to unlearn his harmful behaviors. Plus his aggression towards trans people who disagree with him and his debate bro pals while simultaneously sticking up for those. You didn't really show us any of that, to be honest with you. You just kind of like, you just, you, you told us to take your word for it. So like, you can't even really make that argument. Who do what he says is clearly an example of his queer phobia not being properly dealt with either. His lack of good grace and faith in attacking Kira shows that he actually doesn't believe his own mantra that you can debate Nazis in the marketplace of ideas and convert them. Because apparently someone having said bad stuff in the past is absolutely inexcusable if it's a woman that he doesn't like. When Zan attacks people he doesn't like, there's a whole lot of projection going on. He calls Kira a terrible person who doesn't deserve redemption from her days as an alt-writer. He says that Sophie might have some good political opinions, but she's a terrible person. He calls Lani a master manipulator and implies that she was a terrible partner. He says that woke scolds are mentally ill people who need validation from the internet. That's true. That is part true. Fucking, after realizing what a woke scold is, they probably they may not actually be mentally ill, but they are definitely fucking... Uh, like children, if you like, just weaponizing fucking like woke ideology to go after people. That's what a woke scold sounds like.
people who probably jerk off and like fucking come to shitting on other people because they're not with, the, with their eyes perfect. You seem like that kind of person, by the way. Because they never go outside. These are all things that could be applied to Xander Hall himself. Maybe. All this coupled know. with a refusal to self-reflect simply means that he's a narrow-minded man who's stuck in his own bizarre world of failed Minecraft YouTuber dreams and mummy issues. <sighs> okay. And it's sad. Lots of people like- Hey bro, you're a failed streamer, so I don't know why you're shitting on this guy for being, I guess, not the most popular streamer, but okay. Xander Hall, because, like his debate- You know what's actually interesting? I heard Xander Hall, I heard Xander Hall had ADHD, so it's actually none of the, nothing is his fault. Bro friends, they offer a window into politics where you don't actually have to do anything. Except for what the system says you can already do, and this makes them feel like they're making a difference in a world that they, correctly, know is bad. He reinforces the belief that you could change the system from within the system, and people- Sorry, what did you just say? ...actually have to do anything. Except for what the system says you can already do, and this makes them feel like they're making a difference in a world that they, correctly, know is bad. He reinforces the belief that you could change the system from within the system. The only way you can change the system is from within the system. Like, you, you're not, like, if we're not gonna just destroy the system and magically, like, bring something else up, I know that you wanna, like, that is your, that's literally, do you know how people would criticize Kyle Rittenhouse and talk about how Kyle Rittenhouse went to fucking, where was it, Kenosha, whatever, with a gun because he wanted to live out his cowboy fantasy of being a, a fucking conservative gunslinger? That's the same thing this person is doing and every single other fucking like LARPing asshole fucking leftist. They're like, oh, we have to destroy the system and we have to fight back. But like, shut the fuck up. You're a pussy. That's never going to happen. You're not going to do that. And you and you guys would not be the first ones to fucking like uh, throw down the second that the system breaks apart. It's going to be those same obnoxious fucking conservative gunslinging motherfuckers that are in, in a over the system because the ones with the guns. So like, stop pretending to like this is you're just trying to like li you're, you have the same diluted fantasy of Kyle Rittenhouse where you're going to be able to fucking, I'm going to save the world by destroying the system and magically everything will get better. You're not going to do that. Shut up. You're the same as, you're the same as like any annoying fucking asshole. And people love that because people with privilege and comfort don't want to do anything other than what they already do. You sound like somebody that's very privileged, so I don't know what the fuck you're on about. They don't want to change their mind too much. They enjoy the cruelty and puritanical cult-like behavior that's encouraged in white Western colonial society. He sure. reinforces their prejudice and basically makes them feel like they're doing an activism, whereas really they just have posting disease, thinking that you can change the world with minimal online activity. It's arguable that Xander Hall does nothing for progress despite his progressive opinions about race, gender, and sexuality. The dogpiling he encourages on marginalized people pretty much cancels out the perceived good work that he does. But there's a reason for all this being the focus of the content. We already know he was struggling for money living out with Lani, and of course he knows that having centrist, drama-based content is a lot more lucrative because, well, simply but people are ghouls. That's what you're doing. You're doing the same, you're doing the same thing you're criticizing him for. What are you talking about? And they love that shit. The debate scene is something that reinforces this observation because people like Destiny and Vosh rake in sizable incomes for having paper-thin positions and wildly fluctuating moral compasses, which reinforce the biases of their mostly centrist neoliberal viewers. And people love the drama. The blood... I like how centrist is a bad word now, too. Isn't that crazy? ...but of the debate community. And ultimately... It doesn't get us anywhere. As mentioned earlier, there is no actual evidence that says that debate stops people from having bigoted opinions, nor- No, that's not what you said before. Before, you said that it was a fact that it doesn't stop, it doesn't change anything. And then you show us a fucking quote, like a moron. All right, first of all, yeah, I agree. I think you can, like, look, ugh, dude. There are people in this video that you reference that would, like, de-radicalize them. I, I don't know, dude. Like, you're, you're a lost cause at this point. Or does it stop them from hiding them? No, lots of people let those opinions out when somebody upsets them, as we've seen with our- Yeah, as we've seen with your friend calling black people the N-word. I don't know what you were telling you. What are you talking about? Your friend is an example of, like, that shitty person that just- <laughs> But Zanny Man. My friends Sophie and Kara have spoke to me in private about the harassment that they've gotten from Xander Hall's community, okay. and it is fucking heartbreaking. Yeah, yeah, the community. There's a difference between getting harassed from a community versus, like, actual people, okay? Like if Xander Hall was sending harassment, that's one thing. It's just from the community. That's so that's so like obscure. You're blaming him for his fans. It's just silly. Like, I get it. There's the level of responsibility to an extent, but like there's only so much you can do. And the, the what he needs to do is be like, hey, don't send hate to these people, which he apparently says in the beginning of his videos but from what you're saying. So these are not people that need any more shit in their lives, Xander Hall. These are phenomenal people. They're and not. Allies they sound like who would have garbage. supported you and fought for you if you'd only just done a little bit of work to unlearn those harmful behaviors. Take some criticism on the chin and apologize. It's that shitty debate bro mentality you've got of never conceding and never showing weakness. It doesn't help anybody, including you. You're I actually toxic started making content criticizing the debate circuit because of the tweet that Sophie made that you. How do you know it's not just because it's lucrative? You're talking about how things that actually matter. That doesn't really matter that much. I think you're just doing it for views, honestly. So, like, that's, your, that's the same criticism you leverage against everybody else. So, like, what's stopping people from make, drawing that conclusion? 
unceremoniously blasted and sent your community after her for. I already knew that debate bros were a farce in terms of their progression for the left, but that harassment and hate that you sent my friends way radicalized me friends. against the debate bro circuit in its entirety. I don't want to be doing hour plus long videos about nerds who just need to fuck- Yes, you do. They're your most fucking popular videos. Shut up. You're full of shit log off for a month and read some theory. I want to be doing content about how we can literally change the world and all the awesome activism that people- Wait, what? It's entirety. I don't want to be doing hour plus long videos about nerds who just need to fucking log off for a month and read some theory. I want to be doing content about how we can literally change the world and all the awesome activism that people are doing right now. I want to restore people's faith in humanity, but you and your mates are clogging up the online political space and hurting people, and it's gotta fucking stop. You even said yourself how disappointed you are that the majority of people end up disliking you before you've even got a chance to get to know them. Ugh, who am I kidding? He's not even fucking watching the video, is he? You won't even watch this shit the entire way through. All in all, when Xanahol talks about why he started streaming, his political journey, and what happened to him during that journey, plus his hopes and dreams, I find myself relating to him a lot. Like, we started streaming for the same reasons. He wanted to be a gaming streamer, so did I. He got into politics because he realized there was something up with the world, so did I. He enjoys what he does in the politics scene, so do I. So how did Zan get so close but so far from being super based? I'm literally 10 years older than Xanderhal, but I've got a lot of fi You're 10 years older? This guy's 30 years old? How is he so fucking childish? Holy fuck. What? There's no way. There's no way he's like 32 years old. Holy shit. You're, 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 you're fucking grabbing my jimmies right now, aren't you? Holy fuck. This guy acts like a fucking child. Holy sh Jesus tits, dude. Faith in Zoomers, they seem to be really well politically aligned. Far more so than Millennials. But with Xander Hall, I just feel this huge disappointment. This video isn't an attempt at cancellation because, hell, as we all know, that doesn't work. This is just to point out to everyone, including Xander Hall, that the debate bro circuit and debate culture as a whole has got some extremely harmful behaviors that need to stop. If you yeah, apparently so does the fucking uh, video essayist culture because you're fucking unhinged, weirdo been on the fence about Xanderhal, or even if you've been watching this whole thing, foaming at the mouth, raiding that I dare criticize him, all I want- I don't even care about Xanderhal. I don't even know who the guy is, really. Like, I don't like or dislike the guy. This is just like a fucking unhinged hippies. ...is for you to consider what I've said. It doesn't matter in the long run if you change your minds, because I know that people are eventually going to move away from debate bro content. The world is changing in vast, phenomenal ways. I Okay, if you say so. And we're on the press- You're right, we're all going to grab a gun and we're going to have to go, we're going to have to go free the, free the people. We're going to all be fighting soon of something amazing. And most people will forget all this drama content. They'll forget all the debate bros, all the drama channels, and communities will thrive and support each other under the worsening material conditions of global capitalism. There's so much more that you can use your online influence for. People are doing amazing things all across the world, and you could be covering that and giving hope to people. Yeah. All I've seen in Xanderhal's comments over the last month of recent- Maybe they just don't want to see Xanderhal talk about it, because he's like, that's just not the content they want to see. Maybe they find him like boring or something. I don't know. Searching for this video is people complaining that the left is fracturing and nothing will get done while the left is always fighting like this. And well, that's just not true. Despite all this terminally online bullshit, people are making headway. People are waking up to the fact that their governments don't care about them. People are taking matters into their own hands and looking after each other. Yeah, like Sneeko. He was calling that out. Sneeko is a new leftist, baby. Xander Hall's audience and the entire debate bro audience are caught in a spiral of doomerism. But it could all change overnight. Just think about it. Seriously. No, I'm not gonna think about anything you said. Oh, that was uh, a waste of my time. I'll tell you that much. Thank you so much for watching this, everyone. Holy shit, this is like the longest video I've ever made. Look at the fucking word count for the script. Jesus Christ. 15,000 words. Wow. I thought you had ADHD. How did you now, manage that? listen. I'm not being funny, but I deserve a few You're new not. patrons for this. <laughs> no, but seriously, thank you so much to my patrons who supported me. Uh, this video couldn't have got done without you and the supporters that I've got on Twitch who keep me financially stable and allow me to do a job that I fucking love. So please, please, please consider becoming a patron or supporting me on Twitch or even donating directly to my Your Twitch has like no subscriber. Like how, you don't even, I haven't even seen your streams on Twitch. I'm so confused. How do you, wait, this is financially. You make two hundred and thirty nine dollars a month on Patreon. How do you make this? Where, where do you? How do you make money? Okay, here's his. Here's his. Is it? Did he have the wrong Twitch? Was that? Nope. Six thousand followers on your Twitch. None of the videos stay up. How many views are you getting? I'm so confused. Okay. Whatever. Um. PayPal. All the links and thank you to Kara Chat.
Blah, blah, blah. Okay, what a waste. All right, cool video. Thanks. <laughs> what a fucking... I'm going to shit my pants. Thank you so much for watching, guys. And another special shout out to all my Patreon and Twitch subs. If you'd like to support this channel further than you already have by just watching the video alone, go down to the links below where you can sub on my Patreon, which will allow you to get your name on this beautiful black wall. <laughs> uh, or you can go to the Twitch page and you can actually use a free Amazon Prime sub, if you have Amazon Prime, to subscribe. Thank you very much, guys. Take care.